Hello, everyone. Thank. That is. What is happening? Oh. Hello, everyone. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Bringing the chaos early. I yes. love this. Mm, let's go. <laughs> welcome, welcome to our stream. We are on our final 30 minutes of the campaign, kind of. And when I say kind of, most of you are already familiar with the fact that if there is a fun new feature uh, in Backer Kit where if you back and there is a backer train going or you back in the last 10 minutes or so on and so forth, um, the campaign doesn't end. Now, we've decided to make this particularly uh, excruciating for all of us, and we've decided that not only will the campaign not end, but we are going to play a campaign of heart, well, a session anyway, and that will also not end until you stop backing Dagger in the Heart. So theoretically speaking, we could be playing a very, very long campaign of heart today. Mm. We have another... Uh, guests joining us shortly uh, but for now we wanted to jump in now that we've got we <laughs> we're using backer kits cool new tools and cool new integrations and we're really keen about all of the fun things that they're trying and doing but we are simple folk and easily confused so it took us some time to get this where we wanted to so if you're watching from the launch page um you know, hey folks, we're here if you're watching from Twitch. Also, hey folks, uh, good to have you here. I'm going to be dropping some links in the chat as we all uh, chat, including to our Backer Kit launch page if you just have happened to somehow swerve that for this entire month. Mm. And also, I'm going to be dropping some content warnings for the actual game once we start the game, but they are also on the bottom of our screen. So, um, hi folks, I'm CJ. Um, some of you know me as CJ Starry. I am the marketing community and customer service person here at Rowan Wick and Deckard. And uh, my pronouns are mainly they, them, and I'm excited to be here. I'm going to pass around to everyone with uh, Grant last so he can kind of move us into the, uh, into the things that we are doing. Hooray! Um, so let's go. Who is to my side is Elaine. Why don't you give us your pronouns, please? Hello, I'm Elaine. Uh, pronouns she, her. Um, I am the producer um, on uh, Dagger in the Heart slash Heart, etc., which just kind of means I'm attempting to steer this runaway train as best as I can. Um, and uh, yes, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I'm a little tired and I'm very looking forward to the holiday, which is only slightly being delayed by this potentially <laughs> endless stream. It's going to be so the instant... it's gonna be fine. I know, I know. That's the thing. I would really like it to be one of the other. It either ends immediately and we're like, well, that was fun, or it's got to go on for like a good amount of time. We'll see. Um, yeah. You heard it here, folks. Also, those of you who celebrate, happy holidays. Um, and I also did want to do a quick shout out just to folks in general. Uh, Sarah uh, Cousins, who's done the art for Dagger in the Heart, absolutely gorgeous. And our writer, uh, Gareth Ryder Hanrahan. Uh, big, big, big thanks to both of them. Without them, this project wouldn't be here. I've noticed I didn't start the countdown timer. Um, at all, but I want to tell you a little bit about that, which I will start appropriately shortly. Uh, that little countdown timer in the bottom corner there uh, will count down to four. However, every time you back the project, it puts a new 10 minutes uh, from, from that four end. Every time you back the project, like if you back it in the last like two minutes or the last whatever, it'll add another 10 minutes onto that project. I believe that is how the endless train works, um, which I've said before with the backer, uh, the backer trains and all that, that that was the least horrifying train associated with um, Heart. This is mm. maybe the second least horrifying mm. train associated with Heart, because there is still some existential uh, dread here. So that countdown timer, if I'm on top of it, will reset every time one of you um, backs and it goes back to 10 minutes. So that is how this works. Uh, the game will continue on 
until that countdown timer runs out. Unless it is run out because I am distracted by the game. Uh, but I'll do my best for that not to be the case. <laughs> I think I've shouted out the folks that I need to shout out and explained the timer. So I'm going to pass down then to our bottom corner here with uh, Ed Spence. Go ahead. That's me. Uh, I am Edward Spence. Uh, you can find me at Edward underscore Spence underscore on Twitter and most social medias. Uh, you can also find me on Tuesdays over at the Wounded Warrior Project channel, uh, where we stream our Tales from the Loop uh, campaign, raising money for charity and for veterans over in uh, America. And we also have a lot of other projects coming up. Um, you can also check out a complete mini series of Beyond the Brook over on Stella Luna's YouTube channel, a wonderful Babe in the Woods mini series about five children lost in a mysterious wilderness known only as the backwoods it is beautiful it is cozy autumnal and just a little bit of dread as well so yeah come check it out uh that is me i think i'm not very good at plugging myself oh, thank you that was that was that was super smooth, was so <laughs> smooth. I, I feel oh, i know everything about you it's it's the wine honestly it's the midday wine <laughs> it is Ooh, midday wine. i'm jealous wow um some of us are at work ed <laughs> Some of us are on GC. And <laughs> so chat really quick, just let me know if I'm a little bit louder. Sorry for being quiet. And in the in the uh, meantime, I'm gonna pass it on to Jess Jewel. Hello, I am Jess Jewel. I am she, I am they, and I am not mad at he. Uh, I am the producer for Three Black Halflings, an incredible podcast about diversity and dice rolls, run by the incredible Jasper William Cartwright, Liv Kennedy, and Jeremy Cobb who will be joining us later, I'm very excited to say. Um, three Black Halflings is also having its first live show ever with all three halflings in one place at one time, which has been, no word of a lie, an absolute nightmare to organize because they're all in four corners of the earth, but we're getting them together next week. So if you are in London on April the 5th, please take a look at the Leicester Square Theatre website, consider consider buying a ticket and head on down and have a really lovely time. We'll be, produ well, we'll be playing a brand new, very first, uh, episode of a brand new actual play series which I'm very very excited to introduce to the world so yeah um, come on down and that is everything from me I think Hooray well last but certainly not least I'm going to have you give your pertinence grant and uh, get us get us started uh, we can talk a little bit about our characters and then uh, jump into the yeah. game but first off yeah. for anyone here who doesn't know Grant what should we know about you Grant? Weird you've come along to the stream if you don't know who I am, but get ready to know. Hello, my name is Grant Howitt. Uh, I wrote Heart with Chris Taylor. This is Heart. Uh, I didn't write the adventure. We got in a real professional to do that. We got in Gareth Anrahan. So it's it's like it's like that, but better, basically. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, as it already says on screen. Uh, I live in Sheffield, and uh, I, live in the, I live in the countryside. It's delightful. I can hear horses and sheep from where I am currently. Well, I would if, you know... Uh, as opposed to being in London, where I could just hear all of my neighbours. So, um, <laughs> I have uh, I am a game designer. You can find me on Twitter ugh, um, at GS Howitt, and indeed everywhere at GS Howitt. The only the only place I use my middle initial. Um, I release one free game a month. If you like, if you like games, you can have one for free. This month's free game is Dog Masters of the Wasteland. <laughs> Uh, where where it's the it's the natural evolution of of the of the XL bully controversy where you can see that uh, you get a dog the size of a caravan and ride it around Brexit stained Britain uh, as a mercenary. Uh, it has it has you can see here it has full rules for what the dog does there, and that's uh, that's that there is a member of the King's Hands. The King's Hands are a necromonarchic cult who tie um, who tie string around their right hand, so it gets fucking massive, just like the King's Hand. And uh, <laughs> and uh, and they they slavishly follow their dead dead monarch. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's that's out on Monday on April Fool's Day, and it's not on April Fool's. It's a real game. You can have it. Anyway, I also I also uh, write uh, serious long games like Heart, like the upcoming Hollows, uh, like Spire, the city must fall, which is the sister game to Heart. Uh, and today I am going to dance for you for money. Everyone else here is getting paid. Well, C uh, actually, CJ and Elaine are getting paid the normal amount. The other two people here are getting paid. Um, and once uh, and once Jeremy Rice will be getting paid, he'll be getting paid too. But I am effectively dancing for money. Now, I will not dance for free. I am not above 
dancing for money, that's fine. It's 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 a valid form of work. But if I catch any of you cheeky little motherfuckers putting the same ten quid in and out on a strip, I'm shutting this whole stream down. Okay, so don't take the piss, or this is over. I don't know how we'll tell. If I'm honest with you, <laughs> if if the if the number hasn't gone up. And we've been playing for four hours. Then I guess we'll probably just cut it in. But yeah, I will. I will. I will crash the stream into a wall with the slightest provocation. I have no, <laughs> no one. We've we've already made 170 grand. It doesn't matter what happens here. But we're here for the love of the game. Um, we haven't started yet, and I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah, this is a yeah. really like, unhinged energy Intense. going in. I I, I don't. <laughs> I feel this upset. is a tone setter. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Um, I mean, we are all going to die eventually, which is just a general statement, but also a statement about our characters. Sooner. Sooner, yeah. So uh, I decided to... Uh, I, initially, I decided that the, the concept of an endless stream was a sort of uh, Sisyphean purgatory, but uh, I had a chat with CJ, and CJ uh, reminded me about money. Uh, yeah, and, unfortunately, uh, that's my. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> see, they reminded me uh, that we need to earn money by marketing in some way, and this is that. So I'm here dancing, <laughs> dancing for for coppers that you throw over arm into the internet. Um, this stream is going to go on until you stop giving us money. I I, I think it's either going to be about twenty minutes or or six hours. So we'll see. We'll see what happens, won't we? Um, when the stream ends, uh, I will destroy the city beneath. The, uh, the the heart will be consumed in an, in, a, in what I'm calling a meat explosion, um, and depending on how long the game's going, more and more of the city above will also be destroyed. Depending on how far our characters get out of the heart, um, we have a we have a game. So we have a pretty normal game of heart coming up for you, aside from the fact that it's going to end at some point. Um, in terms of lines and veils and stuff, I've had a chat with everyone uh, around. Well, sorry, sorry, CJ's had a chat with everyone around the table and then passed that on to me. Uh, and it turns out that we're all fine with pretty much whatever. But I can I can guarantee you, dear viewer, uh, as this is one of my streams, there's going to be no sexual violence. There's going to be no non-funny harm against children. Um, yeah, it's define, fine. It's funny. Define non-funny. Oh, well, like you're like you're like. Okay, if a child falls off a swing, that's funny. But if a child gets run over, that's not funny. You know? A great, a great line has been drawn here today. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. And again, if the, the internet... child flies really far. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, 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 anyway. No, there's, there's, there's no children. No children in this game of heart. Zero. All the children have uh, been eaten. No. All the children have gone. <laughs> They're all uh, safe we have... elsewhere. <laughs> yes, they're just, they're, 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 just, they're the other side of the camera. It's fine. <laughs> they they all went to live in a farm up up spire. <laughs> all the kids are on the baby farm. Yeah. Great, yeah. wonderful. That's yeah, that's, that's a more ominous phrase. So, um, we are going to introduce our characters. Um, normally, how heart works is you have you have a, you have your character class and you have your calling, and the uh, your calling uh, is a is a sort of programmed set of beats or goals or things that will happen to your character. Uh, and not all of them are nice. Uh, so, for example, so, some of them might be uncover mysteries, uncover truths behind the mystery that's driving you into the heart. And some of them might be have your legs shot off by a madman. They are. It's just things that might happen to you. I have decided to completely remove that from this game. And I've just given the characters two goals for this session. And I'm hoping they're slightly... Slightly pulling against each other, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, everyone's already picked their characters. These will be very familiar to you if you've read the Heart Quick Start, because we just used those. Because we have five players, there were five of those. Um, and if this if this lasts for ten minutes, it wasn't worth making the characters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so let's uh, let's go around and introduce our characters. I think it's probably the, probably the best bet. So, well, I can't see who who's in what order. Yes, I can. Um, we'll go in reverse order from me. So, Jess, first up, who are you playing? So today I am playing Lind Vassale, a heart song called Witch, because, I mean, she's a witch deep down in her core. She always was, she always will be. So this was the character that absolutely sang for me. Um, Lind 
is a creature within a creature. Beneath her skin lies something else, a truer form, a greater form that just yearns to be let out. Um, in her calling for the heart song, she knows that she must get into the heart mm -hmm. by any which way possible. And she is very excited to do this alongside one of the other characters that she has met beforehand. Oh, oh, hey. oh, 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 Grant, did you, did you think we hadn't spoken? Did you think we hadn't talked? I'm on the group chat. You got a second group chat? <laughs> <laughs> you got a second wow, fantastic. Oh, I love it. That was great. Brilliant. I, look, the more you talk to each other, the less I have to do. That's brilliant. Um, <laughs> can you also just give us the beats? That I gave oh, yes. you now, because at that point, at that point, like if the stream knows what we're all aiming for, yes, that might be interesting. Um, so my first beat is to find my sister and to get her out of heart, I'll get her out of the heart entirely. But then my second beat, I have completely forgotten and not written down because that uh, okay. would be far too smooth. Um, it's mysterious. Your second, <laughs> your second beat is give yourself utterly to the heart. That is it. Yes. It was, um, I thought it was get into the heart, but no, give myself utterly to the heart. I so love the idea of getting in. Just, just <laughs> finding finding the biggest valve and just squeezing my way um, in there like a bad snake. The, <laughs> bad snake out of the heart. <laughs> um, I will say, uh, I after I gave you your beats, I then wrote some plot around them. Um, mm -hmm. So your sister's name is, is Enid, which is like mm -hmm. Enid, but with an extra O in there. Don't mind where you put it. Uh, and she has been she has been fully uh, indoctrinated into the Swanfall cult of High Rise. High Rise is where a game will take place. High Rise is my favorite place in heart, and I put all of my scenarios there. And so we're going to do this one here. High Rise. Uh, I will describe High Rise fully. But yes, Ianid um, is a member of the uh, cult. We'll go with cult, and we'll learn more about it as we as we go. Also, we'll say uh, we'll say stream. Uh, CJ, do you remember what the content warnings were? Yes, I do remember Hello. what the content warnings were. We have a cult whose theme is suicide cult. Refugees because the heart is collapsing, corrupt priests, ghosts, the moon, and trains. Wait, like what? The moon is a warning. The moon and trains. <laughs> ghosts, the uh, moon, and trains. Play your cards right. Well, like, I, I think the moon and the train might be exclusionary, but those are my end goals for the game. What a spectrum. Okay. Right. Um, Incredible. Cool. So we've met Lind Vassale, um, a uh, a nightmare creature hidden within another nightmare creature. Uh, but now we're going to meet Ed's character. Who are you, Ed? Well, speaking of nightmare creatures, uh, Lind has a guide. Um, mm -hmm. So I took the uh, class Junk Mage, uh, but I've I've changed up the name a little bit. He is. Living beneath the city between, everything from the city above flushes down through the pipes and finds its way down to him eventually. Um, he believes in the drowned go uh, queen, uh, a deity, and he believes it to be a great godly rat queen. Uh, he drinks only of salt water from the pipes in the city, the lifeblood of heart, and the water in which she bathes, and through which he can hear her voice. Although it may well just be madness taking him, it's hard to tell. Uh, but whenever a rat around him dies, he flays their fur. He adds it to his coat and his cloak and siphons their souls into little glass vials which he injects straight into his veins. He is the dire... Uh, the Dyed Piper, uh, so named for the <laughs> streaky blue paint that covers his entire body. And he sees something in Lynn's eyes and has agreed to accompany her down, down, down into the heart. There's canonically nothing in Lynn's eyes we can see. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. I like that. I also I really like the, the redesign of the drowned queen as some sort of horrible rat queen. Because I've <laughs> I've I've pitched her as like kind of a sexy anglerfish. But I I, I mean I, both things may be true. I think the I, dyed I like piper it. probably has no idea one way or the other. I, you know what? I think also rat pelt would keep you warmer than mm. anglerfish pelt. <laughs> Uh, CJ, go. I just saw a message from Jeremy. I think I think he's he's in. He's in. So um, either after Ed or after Elaine's character, I was going to take us into a very very brief, um, not really a break because I'm going to play you all that awesome trailer. 
uh, Let's do it. while I do it. And we're going to get Jeremy in uh, before we mm. even started playing, which is excellent news. We didn't think that would happen, but, you know, um, we're all going to be here and we're all going to play. So, in the interim, we're going to show you that trailer that we created again. Uh, and then we will be back in, whatever, three minutes that it takes to play the trailer? Something like one minute? Let's go! Let's go. <laughs> See you shortly, everyone. <laughs> That description was great. Yeah. I saw you do a terrible thing. Delph, was I? Fancy meeting you down here. I thought I was the last. The Vermisian was a failure. One I intend to reverse. I built a machine. A machine that cuts infinity. Called the Delving Machine. No man should be chained by the sins of his past. You're heading into the Amaran Zone? Better you than me. Forge spells to twist the river of time back upon itself. Nasty piece of work there. Oh, it's only place could birth a weapon that twisted. What does it mean to die on the threshold of hell? Nothing but walking corpses. I think that's the find beauty in Other you hear them, don't you? If you spill God's blood into the earth, is that ways to die down here? You sure picked a special one. Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. Give up. It's a mercy, really, to kill you now. For you do such terrible things. We're in. <laughs> Lawless. Seems he is muted still, though. Yeah, yeah. And the videos aren't lined up. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll yeah, they're there. Getting there. Hold on. And Edward isn't. I'm very happy with that, honestly. Edward is a train. <laughs> <laughs> Look, oh, I, Jeremy, I think, hold so, the Edward. For the audience, I think that's <laughs> only going to be better, I think. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm excited to do this. Uh, uh, so my uh, name, Jeremy Cobb, C-O-B-B. -B, that's probably seen on the stream. Uh, my pronouns, he and him, also probably seen on the stream. Uh, I'm on the show Three Black Halflings that I, I happened to catch a little bit of the stream just before I got in that Jess mentioned. I'm on that. I'm one of the halflings. It's named after a character I played. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jeremy Cobb one. Uh, this Cobb with two B's, the number one. You can find me on Instagram uh, at the Cobb Meister. Uh, and in addition to Three Black Halflings, I do a bunch of other stuff. But uh, you can find me for uh, fun video game times on Twitch.tv slash Casual Quest Live as well, where I, I, I who am not a gamer, uh, play classic games in an attempt to become more of a gamer. Uh, should I introduce my character? Hey, Jeremy. That's just... <laughs> All right. Yes, I'm playing uh, an adventurous heretic. Uh, and I know that we're using the pregens, but I think we were allowed to change the names in certain aspects. Oh, please do. Yes. So I did. I'm not playing Tenacity Malrik. I'm instead playing Warabe. That's W A R A A B E. Warabe, uh, he, him, although sometimes he refers to himself as we and us as well. Um, should I fully describe his whole appearance or are we getting yes. that? Yes. 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 
Okay, well, uh, Warabe is a knoll, a hyena man. Uh, he has light tan fur. He has black stripes covering his sides and his legs and arms. Uh, he has a long mane down the length of his back and down his bushy tail as well. And he, in addition to just cutting a striking figure based on his natural appearance, the way he dresses also cuts a very striking appearance because he wears an Aelfir mask, uh, which is unusual because gnolls and, and high elves are usually at war. But mm. he wears one of the uh, upper class Aelfir masks. He wears the vestments of a drow priest and carries a long human gun uh, that is arrayed in all sorts of fetishes, scraps of clothing, and body parts from various cultures and people. I, I, I wasn't. I'm not not ready for players who've read the book. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Like like no, normally I run, and people are just are just like, oh, I guess I'm uh, uh, Alf. There's no Bob. But yeah, you you, you, you understand the geopolitical tensions. <laughs> I came to play. I came to play. Got to say, Jeremy, hell of an Airbnb you scored for yourself there. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, uh, yeah. Must be a bug. Believe, heat. Would you believe three hundred a night? Really? Yeah, I think it's because there are so many ghosts living here. Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I always prefer to get placed to myself, but I, you know, I exactly. Just... And I think the ghosts don't like having me here. Mm. So when I'm here, they cause in enormous property damage, and that pretty much gets passed on to me. Right. <laughs> they keep lighting fires, and it's, the chimney is blocked. It's not. It's an ornamental fireplace. Yes, I will have to run off in order to unblock the chimney, so I don't suffocate several times. Yeah, no worries, man. That's fine. Yeah. Oh, welcome to London. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's get let's get a lane's introduction uh, while CJ is still fiddling around with the uh, with the videos. Ooh. <laughs> I respect your efforts. <laughs> Hello. Yes, uh, we're we're here. We we live for the scuff. Chat is having a good time. It seems so. That's all grand. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I'm playing uh, Quinn Monroe. Uh, sorry, Quinn Moreau, uh, who is the Vermissian Knight. She is, um, you know, she's a little bit uh, past it. You could say she was a Vermissian Sage up until a hot minute ago, when there was that minor accident, just an ever so slight small accident with trying to summon the Vermissian, which resulted in um, problems uh, in the spire. And uh, so she took up the mantle of the Vermissian Knight, and she's been tasked with going down in there, and uh, she's got to essentially try and save enough people to make up for all the people that, you know, fell during this accident. So that's her, her penitent thing, is finding the people who really look like they're going on a suicide mission and putting herself in that group in a hope to protect them. And everyone she manages to save, she will get them to etch their names upon her armor um, and, and whatnot. Um, as a character, she is uh, she's a she's a big, you know, big tall lady in big tall armor, um, and uh, she's yeah she's got a lot of smile lines around the face, not as many around the eyes, you know, graying hair that's been cut short, a good few scars that are recently healing, um, and uh, you know she's always trying to put an optimistic spin on things, you know she's uh, she's fast approaching. The old Scottish granny, and uh, but the old Scottish granny's got a pneumatic hammer and a set of, you know, demonic <laughs> crane powered armor. So you know, very imposing. But then she'll make sure everyone eats their dinner, you know, oh, so that they're you know can't, can't adventure on it. Mother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. And she she sees everyone as a bunch of bairns that are off wandering around where they shouldn't be. So she's 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 a while making sure that all the bairns are safe down down deep, you know? Um, and sometimes she succeeds more often than not oh, she fails. Um, so, apparently, you know. Apparently you're muted, CJ. Oh, exciting. Oh. No, you're not you're, muted. Well, you're muted for the stream, I think. Oh. Maz says you're muted. 
Yes, sir. Um, Elaine, um, what's yeah. uh, what are your um beats? My my beats, yeah. So I have two beats. My I have a major beat, which is to repair the Vermissian engine in Well Station beneath High Rise. Um, so you know, I don't quite know what that exactly that engine is going to be or do, but it, I'm excited to see what happens. And considering last time she tried to repair a Vermissian engine, a bunch of folk ended up dead. So that's great, and possibly the sweetest Zenith beat that i have ever seen which is see the sky one last time oh. which is adorable for mm. this this little old granny strapped into a suit of power armor enormous she's, granny she's, yeah enormous <laughs> enormous granny she's not quite granny but she's getting there you know yeah. uh, I, I will say as well when you hit those beats uh this is a standard game of hearts so you will level up Oh, nice. So when you hit a major beat, you get access to a new major power, which gives you generally something cool to play with. And when you get a zenith beat, you get to pretty much take control of the game off me for a little bit and die. But in a really cool way. Okay. Um, I will say, um, Ed, the zenith tied to the Drowned Queen does involve you marrying her. <laughs> which, honestly, Piper would be so thrilled. <laughs> I like to imagine that Piper is like Piper's going to be going to be woven into her cloak. Yes. Oh my. Yes. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like yeah. A, like a male anglerfish. I I was thinking also. <laughs> You're like, just a dick and balls. Like Brad Dourif in Alien Resurrection. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. You're a beautiful butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> um. While we're at it, actually, Ed. Uh, what are your what are your goals? What are your beats? My beats. Okay, so uh, I have two. Uh, mm -hmm. The first uh, and my zenith being to kill Ventrix Alabaster, the high priest of Swanfall, for what she's done to me and mine. And my major goal is simple. It is achievable. It is eat a ghost. Finally. <laughs> um, was, I couldn't couldn't come up with a great one. Mm -hmm. But I like to, I like to think that in desperation we've pushed somewhere interesting. I think uh, I think it could be character defining, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Jeremy, yes. uh, or Warabe, what are your um, what are your beats? Uh, so my zenith is to open a path to the moon beneath with strange magics. <laughs> and my major is to rescue the Shrine Keepers from High Rise. Very good. Uh, you know that there is a, you have a somewhat, uh, the name of your contact or the name of the of the, the priest uh, who you, who, who keep the shrine, uh, uh, the, the chief priest who keeps the shrine in High Rise is called Kashet, C-A-S-H-E-T. Um, uh, any other names I need to know? Could you repeat that one more time? C A S H E T. Passion. Okay. Um, I have I play I play a word search game on my phone for about four hours a day, and every time I come up with some jumbled nonsense that doesn't count as a word, I'm like, oh, I could be a name inspire. <laughs> so I've got a big <laughs> list of bullshit. Yeah. Have you, have you seen me frantically going on my phone? It's mm, it, <laughs> it was prep. So is um, is Cash it then my contact? I'm in yes, contact. Yes. With uh, you, okay. You know Kasha, um, and you were you were eager to get them out of there. Um, but uh, I, I will say this: this is the extent of the planning I've done. Um, and, uh, so and let's go. A lot of it is just a lot of it. I've already read out to you. Uh, CJ, are you making noise yet? Let's find out. I hear nothing. No. Nope. Cannot hear you. Unfortunately. No. Nope. Oh, beautiful. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're still not coming through on the stream, I'm afraid. Yeah, but the way it's framed, we're missing all of that. No. 
That's a shame. I made a back end joke. Yes! Yes! We're in! <laughs> oh! Thanks, yes. Yes. Oh, Excellent. C um, CJ's messed up back end. Well yes. done, the... CJ. That looks so fit. Oh, everybody, um, round of applause for CJ. <laughs> you absolute goddamn tech wizard. I, I will at some point later on Twitter post what I was dealing with. Because <laughs> there are just layers on the side that are just stuck and I couldn't see what was under them so I was just moving people around and hoping for the best uh, but we got there and that's what matters it's just things are a little strange in the heart um <laughs> we, we use that way too often we need a new joke uh, hi uh I am playing Gethin Bane I am I am a hound and my calling is forced which means I do not want to be down here um, I have developed that Gethin is uh, indebted to someone in the Spire, to an Aether in the Spire, due to um, a, a small, um, what might say, drug problem. Uh, but they've got a heart of gold. It's just really, really deep down in there. <laughs> And uh, they have been sent just surrounded down by a lot of heroin. By a lot of heroin, oh. yeah. Um, they've been sent down uh, into the heart against their will uh, to look into things, and they're not happy about it. But they've become fond of the people they've met along the way. Uh, and I, I don't think I have anything more more to say about Geffen. Um, they're sort of mid length, uh, mid length. Mm. Mid -length. Mid -length. A mid-length drive. Mid -length. <laughs> okay. uh, length. Length. How long is your character? Mine, how deep? <laughs> as far as length goes, mine is mid. Um, my character <laughs> is of, of, of a slightly taller than average height, uh, not immediately discernible to be of a masculine or feminine variety of person. They just are. They've got short, kind of shaggy, uh, dark hair, and they wear a lot of sort of... Um, leathers um like browns and sort of just not so much in the like ooh, i'm a fancy punk person but in the like uh i can't afford kevlar but uh this will do so that's uh that's guessing um my beats are to put the spirits of high rise to rest and to evacuate high rise which is the first one is my zenith and my um second one is my major beat uh and like i said secret heart of gold this one uh wants to make sure everyone's okay so that's that's uh geth in bane but um they're a little they're a little gruff on the outside a little uh, unpolished and uh someone's just reset the timer again excellent <laughs> Let's I wouldn't say would it be if this just ended. We finish. We <laughs> finish. Fine, fine, fine. Well, fine. Whatever. Just gonna yeah, have a lot of potential to it, like, but like, yeah. I, I feel like the best part of any role playing game is before you start actually playing. <laughs> I'm like, I really like you get to make characters. Like, oh, how would these characters interact with the world? Oh, it's great. But then you have to, you have to use the fucking rules. Mm -hmm. It's all, it's always, especially like whenever I've written. Anytime I watch a stream. I, th I think I think I've seen most of you in a stream at some point, p p even playing one of my games, and everyone's got their characters and they're all so excited and like, oh yeah, so here's my character, and they're this 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 pristine fuckable warlock. Oh great, cool. Okay, and you go through, and then and then they're like, okay, I leap and disarm the train with my sword, and they're like, oh, I guess I got to roll some dice. Oh, okay, hang on a sec. Uh, I need to roll three dice and add two. <laughs> what dice am I rolling? And I just log off the stream. Horrible. It's the equivalent <laughs> of spending four hours in character creation in Skyrim. That's... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this part. time we should just stay in character, even as we ask. <laughs> <laughs> like, if you're crying in what a scene. What should I do? I... Okay, is that a D4? <laughs> 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 roll a D4? You become aware. Um, so. We know we 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 know who's playing what, and we're going to keep playing until someone tells us to stop. So, you join us. You join us, <clears throat> ladies, gentlemen, both and neither. You join us. We see the city of Spire from above, this towering mile high city, impossible, ancient, pre civil. Free the current civilization. It's not entirely sure, but this enormous, enormous jagged black spar of, of obsidian sticks out 
amongst the foothills of Destera. And we see at the top, we can see the, the various cults and rocket builders in New Heaven. We can see the blood-soaked streets and the charnelites warring against the, martician, uh, against the morticians in rival death cults. And we go down, we go down deeper. We go down through the frozen streets of Amaranth, where the Elphir ply their trade, where hummingbirds fly back and, back and forth across the streets, bound by fine golden chains and whisper secrets to spies. We go down deeper into the works, into the pounding industrial heart of the spire, where guns and bombs and armor and swords are made for the endless war to the south in Nujab. But come back from Nujab, we're still on the, we're still on the spire. Nujab, where Warabe's from, where, uh, where the Knolls, um, the Knolls have built their enormous desert civilization based mainly on demonology, which is nuclear energy, but demonology. We go back to the spire, sorry. We spiral back down. We go down through the garden district and see the hanging corpse gardens where bright crimson mushrooms grow from the bodies of the dead to feed the living. We go down through into Derelictus, the city between. A lost and dark and sad place, thrice cursed with magical runoff and terrible luck and we go down even deeper still below what is considered the spire into the raw roiling unreality the heart the strangeness the red wet heaven blossoming eternal beneath spire good work alone blossoming beneath spire <laughs> where desperate dark and sad people go to find meaning to find answers to find absolution because they've been forced, thanks to their cocaine habit. Many reasons for going down into the heart. We see, we see corpses of dead gods. We see strange and ancient machines. We see shifting seas of ash and alien skies. We see portals to heaven. We see alien worlds burgeoning pushing against this one, like hot frog spawn on a brown paper bag. <clears throat> but we also see High Rise, which is where our adventure takes place. High Rise is about four or five, uh, we'll call it four, four, uh, 30, uh, four 20 story buildings. These are, they look like 1970s brutalist architecture, because uh, I because I like 1970s brutalist architecture. Um, in fact, I can, just read to you, I can read to you from the book. I wrote this professionally. I'm going to read to you from the book. We've got time. <laughs> High rise, domain, haven, desolate, default stress, D6, haunts, knock through market. A great sea of rectangular towers, each at least 20 stories tall. Between the rooftops, improvised rope bridges hang and sway in the breeze from monstrous vents. Scavengers hide in shanty villages on roof islands, dark and desperate people eking out an existence. Death cults promise absolution on a perfect swan dive into the darkness below. Diseased pink white crows caw and flock above, hungry for carrion. The deeper you go, the more dangerous it gets. The ravenous howling ghosts of a thousand previous inhabitants swarm through the lower levels. They guard their abandoned, filthy apartments from those that would enter in search of ancient treasures. The drow inhabitants of High Rise, living lives that are all too often, all too often cut short by starvation or hungry ghosts, have become obsessed with death. They inscribe the names of their fallen ancestors on their bodies with spidery black tattoos. Some add the names to their own, leading to full titles 30 or 40 words in length. I have not done this for the NPCs. Everyone will have normal names. Smoke wreathed shrines to dead forefathers are erected on jealously guarded rooftops, and rival clans will take great pleasure in desecrating and erasing names written in rival territories. All bodies are thrown off the roofs into the roiling mass of ghosts below. Indeed, falling is seen as a sacred act by some. Just as, cult just as some cultures venerate those fallen in battle, the drow of High Rise believe it is right and good to fall and dash oneself apart on the broken masonry beneath. There is an art to a perfect death, and sects argue viciously over the correct way to die. The Swanfall cult is the most prominent of these sects, and they espouse performing great acts in life giving to the cult, laying ghosts to rest. 
creating edifices in honor of their forefathers before diving headfirst into the deep and never returning. Their only outright uh, their only outright rivals, the Ascendant, believe that generations of sacrifices enter the lower levels are the reason for the ghosts that plague the area, and that bodies should be disposed of in fire. There are secret furnaces in abandoned buildings where they practice their heretic faith. <laughs> That's high rise. It's bad. Um, you can if uh, chat if you if if you want the soundtrack for this, if you go to tabletopaudio.com and search high rise. We had we had um, we had your man who runs tabletop audio do us a tune, uh, and by tune I mean it's ten minutes of, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> um, but it's there if you want if you want some atmosphere. All five of you are in high rise. You are on you are you are atop these massive towers, um, and you have all felt in your bones in your dreams. And in fact, I'm interested to see. Yeah, we'll we'll get a little bit, get a little bit of role playing in. Why not? You all know. <laughs> calm down. You all know that the heart is going to die. The heart is going to be destroyed tonight. You sense the swelling, this vile and vigorous tumescence from beneath, roaring up through every passage as the heart grows cancerous and fierce. Um, we'll start with Jess. How did you learn about this, and why do you believe it's true? I have been having Sorry, Lynn. dreams. <laughs> yeah, I get in character, Grant. Sorry. Lynn has been having dreams. Dark and terrible and wonderful dreams. In it, she sees the face of her sweet sister. Sweet aunt. Just so perfect and pure and always was and has been. And so slowly that face disappears into a roiling mass of bodies and tangles and knots, slippery and wet and grotesque, and they slowly begin to penetrate her. Every orifice, her mouth, her eyes, her ears, they just pierce and tear her apart until there is nothing left except what might be water or blood. She is convinced that this must be a sign from the heart, the thing that calls her name in the shadowy places. She knows that this is bad, but she feels like she must go to it to maybe solve, to maybe be part of it, to become one with this horrific knot, this grotesquery. And this is what she wakes up to screaming loudly shaking the piper as she always does gripped delightful cj uh the timer is now run out yes um uh, i'll just put in the chat yeah. we're not ending um i just am oh. trying to reach the timer uh because it is under one of the stuck layers <laughs> let's, um... let's leave it let's leave it we'll keep on our own. we've got to open a different window it'll say zero zero <laughs> And maybe that um <laughs> we've got eight minutes left at the moment, folks. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're Sorry good. about your anxiety. We have we have we have infinite time until we have no time. Um well we might as well go on to the Piper then, to the dyed Piper, um, who's been who's been accompanying um Lind on her on her on her travels through the undercity. Oh, the tea has been as this <laughs> Skinny, sinewy figure covered in streaky blue paint and covered in this large mass of rat pelts that almost doubles his silhouette. He has this scraggly grey beard and this studded brown leather hood that ends in this sort of snout, not unreminiscent of a rat. And you can see that there are track marks all up his arms and every time he moves and as he is shaken by Lind. You hear the soft clinking of glass vials underneath his pelt as he looks towards. Hast thou been having bad dreams again? I will not stop. The heart is in danger. Something is happening within it. I can feel it. Aye. 
The Drone Queen has been telling me as much. Twenty four yeah. hours. What um what 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 visions have you received from the Drone Queen? Oh, much the same. Everything bodies. You don't have to respond in character. I'm oh, the that's GM. Okay. <laughs> it's fine, uh, writhing. Oh, your right. accent is spreading a little bit. <laughs> Oh, aye, okay. Uh, no, it is much the same writhing bodies and water, water mm. rising and rising. There is a call, a call for marriage, a call for union, a call for one, many and one at once and many. And as the piper looks in the direction of Lind, within her he sees this many, he sees this one. He sees scratching, he sees writhing, he sees... It is divine. It is a light shining out. And he will follow it. He will follow it until the beating stops. Fast becoming my OTP, these two. <laughs> That's fantastic. <clears throat> um, cool, okay. I'd like to imagine the two of you are just asleep in a vent near high rise getting ready for uh to 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 extract your sister i like i like to imagine that's 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 why the two of you have come to high rise uh to to visit and also uh, i am more than happy for anyone else to know anyone else it saves me time and makes the role play better um uh in high rise itself it's a the hounds the hounds of of heart it's not that they're cops but more that they're mercenaries and they're kind of community focused mercenaries who have been cursed by the souls of every person who's ever died in heart to, uh, to, to protect the living. It's a bit weird, but we have, we have a hound. Uh, we have a hound who's been forced down here by their drug habit. Her, his, their drug habit. I went with they, but I feel their like drug they're habit. good with Easy they enough. and he, um, they don't really feel like a she, but when I feel, feel it out, I feel like it's they, he, probably. Um, you, how, how have you learned? And I, I like to imagine that, that, that like, that, like you, you've been working in high rise mm -hmm. for a bit and you sit, you sit up bolt upright in bed as you realize what's about to happen. What, how, how have you come to, to learn this knowledge that the heart is to be destroyed today? So, as far as what's been happening up until this point, uh, Gethin's had his ear to the ground. Uh, they're really, they know people, um, because when you have the sort of proclivities and habits that they have, uh, you have to know all sorts of people, and they have to have a lot of different types of information, and sometimes you catch wind of strange happenings. And it was whispers and nods and inklings that Inkling. came up to this point that Gethin had pushed to one side, hadn't thought about it too thoroughly until they all came together in a dream, not a vision like uh, our dear witch, but just a dream when your brain is organizing all of the information that you've gotten from the day or days before and it all conglomerates slowly into this is real this is happening this is happening now and they sit up thinking about all of the things that people had said to them in the days before thinking about all of the ways that it just hasn't been right for a while and he knows it's going to happen today. You can, uh, your, your, you, do you sleep wearing your badge? Every hand has a badge. Yeah, um, absolutely. You sleep wearing, or is, yeah, cool. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's, it's heavy on your chest, like, like sleep paralysis dream, uh, demon heavy. It's um, so grody. They never take it off. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, it's covered in gravy and cigarettes. <laughs> Uh, um, but you, 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 yeah, just loose coke that's, that's got on there. Oh, gravy and um, coke sounds like a great <laughs> Sunday. 
Um, and yeah, um, ev everything comes, everything locks together in your in your mind as you realize that the uh, the whispers, especially from Ventrix Alabaster, the uh, I don't know, not not the um, not not officially in charge of high rise, but Ventrix is 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 a mover and shaker around these parts. And Ventrix has been. Ventrix, she, 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 she perpetually, uh, she, she talks in strange vagaries like an NPC. Um, no, nah, sorry, that's the wrong voice. She talks in strange vagaries like an NPC. It's hot. Come on, girl. Um, <laughs> but you realize you've pieced these together and you work. Oh, actually, this is, this is, this is profoundly fucked. Um, wandering in. Um, I like to. I like to. I, I don't know, um, Jeremy. How do you feel Warabe's involved with this? Because I like the idea of Warabe just fucking turning up, looking like he does. But I'm intrigued uh, to see yes. what you think. Yes, um, I imagine that Warabe may have crossed paths with some of these people. Uh, whether that is he has met them, he currently holds the spirits of those who have met them. Uh, or he has met them in dreams. Uh, I think Warabe recognizes everyone here. Mm. Uh, and I think that without anyone really noticing, he's just here. He's just crouching alongside the rest of the party <laughs> on top of uh, on top of this uh, tower, uh, just silently. Uh, and I feel like even as the, even as much as the party may not have actually met him, there is a an immediate familiarity like from them to him. There is something about him that mm -hmm. seems weirdly familiar to everybody, but possibly in different ways. Um, and I, I, I didn't add, I wanted to add, so he's not just, the mask specifically that he's wearing mm -hmm. uh, is a, so the Aelfear masks, I think come in a variety of uh, designs. Mm. They tend to be pretty nice looking. His looks like, uh, his is a beautiful mix of obsidian and alabaster. It has very delicate features. It has a closed mouth with a coquettish grin, uh, and its eyes are covered by a blindfold that was carved similar to like a Lady Justice blindfold, as though the blindfold was floating in front of the eyes. Mm -hmm. um, so there are no visible eye holes. Uh, although from time to time, uh, people say that you can see eyes glowing through the blindfold uh, at key moments. Uh, but I think Warabe is here because he has, on his mission, encountered such a wide variety and communed with such a wide variety of spiritual entities uh, that cumulatively he has gained an increasing sense of doom. Mm. And I think that he doesn't necessarily know the literal thing that is about to happen, but he knows something is very much about to happen. He has a very good idea of almost exactly when it's going to happen and where it's going to happen. And that he knows that for whatever reason, he needs to be here. You can feel it like a, like a, like a, gra like a, a gravatic pull, like the tides. Yes. Uh, you can like, you can feel the tide rising beneath you. Yes. Uh, it's like uh, walking towards the horizon uh, for a sunrise, but what's rising is a black sun. And he knows that the black sun is about to crest over the hill. Uh, he just doesn't know what it portends, only that it is bad. I I really I really want Warabe to uh, to never have to like enter a scene through a door. <laughs> <laughs> this is always already kind of, there. Warabe's oh. here. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, finally, we have. Uh, we he has have... not spoken, by the way. He is just <laughs> sitting here. I don't know if anyone has noticed his presence. <laughs> uh, finally, we have we have, we have Ken Ken Moran. Uh, what's your mm -hmm. What do you feel like your your role is? Are you, are you a traveler? Do you do you, do, you, do you build things here? Are mm -hmm. you a a protector? So I think in this situation, you know, Quinn, she's uh, she's always on the lookout for folk who look like they might get themselves in trouble. You know, she wants to save people, get more names on her armor, and eventually earn her ticket back home. So in this situation, she's probably glommed on to this group. So at the moment where folk are waking up and speaking of baleful encounters, etc., she's midway through her normal morning routine, tends to wake up a few hours before the bairns, you know. She's pried off the breastplate of her armor and using the small furnace in there to cook breakfast. Uh, noticeably, breakfast? you know. Oh, well, you know, carved off a couple of strips of that pretty nice looking fleshy wall we passed on the way down here. So it's kind of like wall bacon mixed in with a couple of those like 
strange green eggs we found. They're probably all right, you know. Um, and uh, she's to eat, eat, eat your greens, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, that. so she's been she's been cooking away this, and she's plating things up. Noticeably, she'll uh, set up five plates, you know, and because she's been doing this for a while now, she's noticed that where Abby's falling, following, and she's making sure that they know if they ever want to come down and have breakfast with us, you know, you, there's always a plate for you. Um, and she's as a sort of traveler, you know, this roaming sort of guardian, you know, she's. She's heard all these tales, you know, she calls them vibrations in the line, you know, to hear all these tales and everything. But let me tell you, Bairns, you're not the first generation to say the world is ending. You're not the first ones to say the sky is falling. Trust me, sleep well, eat well, look after each other. We'll all be fine. <laughs> and she's saying this with her, her patented smile but her eyes rarely smile she has also this inner feeling this sensation in her that something this might actually be it and she's not sure how she feels about it because you know her her entire motivation is to try and protect people so how, if she can't protect them physically from the end she will at least be there with a warm smile and placing herself between them and the end, and that's the best she can do. And right now, that means giving everyone a wee plate of scran, going around, go on, eat up, it's gonna be a big day. All right, you know, and, and passing these bowls around and leaving one just a little, just just by the by the area for Warabi, if they if they decide that today is the day they wish to come down and eat and join us in conversation. I really like the idea of having the first scene we have as breakfast. I, uh, because because it's the most important meal of the day, um, sure is. and and it's you've you've you've, you've got to get loaded up with uh, <laughs> with you know green eggs and wall bacon. <clears throat> so yes, I like this. Um, I have a question the... for Elaine really quickly, mm -hmm. if I can. Does Elaine have any close friends who have died? Yeah. So I think. Um, so when... Do you mean do you mean a character or? Oh yeah, I R L. The character. <laughs> I, I was looking yeah. at your name on the thing. Plus, <laughs> how? Oh, yeah. The answer is talk real apologize. fucking quick. Do you? The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's get real. <laughs> this is about to get real. Uh, no, does Quinn have any? Uh, does Quinn have any friends or close clo people that they, uh, that she was close to who have died? Yeah, I think so. The sort of the thing that drives her down here is this: she when she was a Vermissian sage a few years ago, she, in her hubris, tried to summon the Vermissian, and in that, it killed, uh, the number I have in my head is 68 members of her order, and that's the number of souls she has to save down here, and a lot of those were her friends, and I think some of those might even have been family, a lover, etc. Um, and she's never quite felt whole since. Um, well, I think as you slide that over in Warabe's general direction, you see Warabe sort of, who has his gun sort of resting against his shoulder, sort of slide his hand up across some of the the items hanging from the gun. And as he does so, you see the eyes behind that blindfold begin to glow and the mouth of the mask splits open in a very specific crooked smile. Uh, it is a smile that does not appear to belong to this mask, but it has the smile of someone that you knew who died mm. in that disaster. And you see a full mouth of teeth that you recognize. Uh, mm. and, the head, and the head just sort of turns and smiles at you. Uh, and you hear a voice uh, just sort of emit from his body, uh, says, we are grateful. Thank you. And then an arm, just a very long striped arm, reaches out and grabs the bowl and slides it over and begins eating. But but the mask maintains that smile looking at you, even as the mouth behind the mask begins eating. I guess Breakfast. you got kind of a long snoot, right? As an old. Yeah, exactly. So there's like a <laughs> mask and then a whole snoot. <laughs> That's amazing. That's yeah. And she's, she's transported for like a brief moment back to that moment, you know, and she recognizes that smile. It is, it is the face of, of a, um, uh, a close friend who was on the, the project and it's the name? same smile they had. Do I name? Do I name? Yeah, give me a name. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's I the same it. smile they had in death, 
um, after being, you know, cooked by the the eldritch energies of that cursed train. So she's taken aback, but it's not the strangest thing she's seen. You know, they seem friendly, so this is... Ah, you're welcome. Oh, Busy day ahead of us. Never gonna get used to that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> what a lovely idea! The fucking Marabe has been hanging around and just like coming up to people and wearing the face of their mother for a while. <laughs> Are you brushing your teeth? <laughs> Have you changed your underwear? <laughs> you could get hit by a bus today. Did you delete my internet search history like I asked? Gorge my um. cash. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Cool. Uh, um, I think all... at this point, mm. Lind will probably um, sort of slink from the Piper's side. She's still not very sure about this group. The only person she seems comfortable with is the Piper. And this sort of waif like Elphir um, in what were clearly once like very beautiful and fine clothes that are now ragged and torn and dirty and spattered with um, liquids that you cannot identify. It could be mud, it could be blood, it could be a, a horrible combination of both. More gravy. It's more awful, fuck, it could be fish gravy for all we know. It's, <laughs> it's a terrible thing. She just scuttles forward and takes the two plates um, sort of closest and eyes Quinn gently. We thank you. We do. And pushes one towards the piper and just begins sort of almost like she hasn't eaten in years, but you've Quinn's been feeding them, um, just begins to sort of shovel it with like dirty hands and like the, those kinds of nails that have dirt the most impossible way down into the beds, like just begin shoveling it into her mouth, just hungry, starving, um, and pushing it down. That's mm. good. Okay. I think Gavin's just sitting by um, mm. uh, Queen uh, and it's just kind of looking at the rest of them like, Yep. That's right. As this happens, the piper is just going to sort of crawl over on sort of very long, kind of spindly limbs and these yellowed, cracked, long nails, and is going to perch himself. Yes, I've got an idea about 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 the uh, about the piper. And correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like he has cosmetic crutches. Yeah, sure. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go with it. Sort of like. Yeah, no, sort of just like this sort of spider-esque kind of... <laughs> and oh. as he sort of comes over and just perches down between uh, between Lind and Warambi, just sort of looks in the direction of the snoot, and then just above it, and... Does thy collect faces? I do not collect faces. I collect spirits. Hey, of those you know, or those you don't. Oh, both. But after I collect them, I always know them. Perhaps one day, you shall know me. <laughs> uh, I reach out with one of my long, uh, are weirdly skinny striped arms and stroke your face and say if the portents come true that day may come sooner than you think that I hope he skittles back a little bit and just starts to pocket little bits of food and you see him just like snap the plate in half and just like put it in these various <laughs> compartments and just it's it's a bit like it's a bit like you know what when, when you're in prison and what you gotta do what you gotta do first yeah. thing, you go out in the yard you find the biggest motherfucker you can find there and you knock him down to show them to show them in business and at the start of every heart campaign i love it because <laughs> i was like oh you're weird are you 
<laughs> I'm weird. Well, I'm weird. <laughs> While I masturbate at funerals. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's great to see. And I'm out here. I like, just made wild making. <laughs> <laughs> We've got mum and the straight man, and then they're three weird kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, mum oh. and the straight man, who have all of like the get people out safely, do the <laughs> plot thing, and everyone else. Yeah, no, I love it. Yeah. Um, just the straight man does drugs. You said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can. Oh, uh, darling, you're not at that again, are you? So, oh. <laughs> not in front of the good, not in front of the bairns. Come on. The piper's just like tapping his vein and just injecting another rat soul in. Just... <laughs> and, and interested in the in the in the mechanics, the physics of injecting rat souls. Is there a liquid there? It's sort of like passing gas into your veins. You can see like little pock marks all oh, across no, it. I'm, no, I'm not a doctor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neither <laughs> is the think, Piper. I think that's one of the few things they recommend against is putting gas into your veins. Piper feels great. Salt water and gas is great. <laughs> so the fucking Michelin man. It's just like... <laughs> The Michelin Man on Kismet Crunch is lovely. Yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah. an image I'm not going to get out of my head. That, that's why you can walk on water. Yeah. Yeah, so you're yeah. just, you're just, you've, you've injected 200 rats worth of air. Okay, cool. Um, we we see uh, as you as you eat the food or put the food in your pockets um, or cook the food um, or chain smoke cigarettes. We uh, we see uh, in the in the ceiling far above uh, the ceiling above high rise that it looks to be a I'm imagining kind of like like an oil rig's crashed sideways through the roof uh, so there's like there's an awful lot of like twisted gantry ways there's oh CJ don't put 900 minutes on the timer <laughs> that's I can't my, my poor soul can't take it I'm so sorry I saw what I did immediately <laughs> 900 minutes um <laughs> We, uh, it looks like an oil rig has been pushed sideways in. So there's a lot of rusted, twisted gantry ways. There's old pistons. There's like there's big pipes and tubes and vents all hanging down and swaying in the breeze. It's very, it's very breezy here, considering you're underground. Um, and you see, um, there's a ah oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you're 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 in a you're in a charming uh, al fresco rooftop um, breakfast nook. We'll say. Um, because you're never really outdoors when you're underground, is what is what Ken's mum always used to say. Um, and there, there is, is just slightly less stale here. <laughs> there is a there is a drop of blood smashes, smashes, splat into the table. And like, not entirely out of the question, this is just Tuesday, but <laughs> you know, all the dreams. Um, and looking up, looking up, you can all see there's the uh, like emerging from the from the roof is this pulsating, writhing mass of flesh. It's quite dark, and like, and if you're not looking for it, you probably won't see it. But it's there, and it's that thing you dreamed about, oh. or 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 the moon told you about. Or I don't know, Elaine. How did you? How did you find oh, out about it? She's just hearing all the banter, you know, folk, folk <laughs> cutting about, saying, "Oh, the sky's falling. Oh, the heart's gonna explode." Oh, it's rains same. of blood. Every mm. eye, every week, you know, it's another rain of blood. It's another imminent explosion. You know, no worrying over nothing. That is a wee bit concerning, though. Mm. More than a little bit concerning. I'm pretty sure, certain this is going to be a safety hazard, like now. I'm fairly certain I have seen this before, and in my dreams. That worries me more than anything else, actually. Warambe? Warambe? Yeah. Does this look familiar to you? It feels familiar. Uh, I stick out a tongue, and lightly touch the blood taste familiar that's heart's blood old bean what happens uh, to me um oh don't worry you're oh hey yeah, sorry great great question and we should use rules at some point because this is a role-playing <laughs> game uh make me a resist curse check please oh no 
Oh, you know, as, as your so tongue that... sticks out, Quinn would have been like, oh, but oh. Like not fast enough. <laughs> just know? the bacon, just the bacon. Cursed. And which which die do I use for cursed? So um, you will roll a d10. You will always roll one d10. All right. If you have the cursed domain, and if you have the, I think it's endure, not resist. If you have the endure skill, if you have either of those, you add an extra d10 for each. Okay. Do you have either? Uh, no. Cool. Roll me a d10, and we'll see how well it goes. I got an eight. Oh, fantastic. That's the best result. Um, I've actually forgotten my own rules. <laughs> let's just second. make up new ones. Let's just vamp yeah, for a while. Let's, let's, uh, let's, 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 you know. Since you wrote them, you could just be like, I don't like those ones. We're, we're <laughs> I, think it was, um, I think it was Dylan earlier in the chat who was like, Grant, how oh, who wrote these fucking rules? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, eight is good. Eight is success with no stress. Um, so you... Um, there is there is a yeah okay you face it this is this is heart's blood this is this is proper high grade um mind warping lunatic juice um I'm like begin collecting some of it i to collect as much as possible uh for later uh just um, like in various re uh, various receptacles that i have on my gun buddy buddy there'll be enough <laughs> not not having enough a, a, enough sort of hunting cancer won't be the issue. All right. Um, I'll put the end of my gun in it. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, you, uh, you, what, when you taste it, you see the majesty of the moon beneath. Uh, you see the majesty of the, uh, of, um, how, tell me, how does the moon beneath, uh, actually, I'll tell you. Uh, the moon beneath differs from the moon above in that it, it is perpetually a crescent. It is. It's and it's not like it's in shadow. It's it's that shape, um, and and contained like within within the corona along the side is the is the scintillating mind of the goddess. The like it's like it's like a like how a satellite dish has the thing on the end. But there, like uh, her her grace, her beauty is focused there, um, and uh, I like to imagine that the eyes on your mask and the eyes under your mask <laughs> both light up. Um, don't know why I made that noise. They both, they both, <laughs> so sound like I'll a say I make the same one. <laughs> um, oh, don't go like in there. Oh, that's not. Oof. Are you all right? Oh, I haven't been all right in a very long time. It's heart's blood. I saw a vision of the great moon beneath. It awaits us. I would, I would like to maybe analyze this and see based just on my contact with it is there any any inkling i can get about what may be going wrong or how we may be able to prevent it absolutely yes sir um this is real bad this is a really bad situation and, and everyone else here is either in denial or insane um and you and you just haven't quite figured out what's going on yet but now you've figured out what's going on in that you've been you've been questing through the heart to bring to bring solace to people to 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 guide souls to the moon garden, um, and your I'd like to imagine that your your role your 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 dream has not been to get to the get get to the center of the heart itself and to and, and to ascend in that way. Definitely, Lind is after that. Um, uh, Ed, I like to think. Oh, sorry. Um, the Piper is probably after that sort of thing. Um, but this is this, this is a, this is a power which you've respected and kept to arm's length. Um, this is this is the 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 power underneath. There is something godly here, and it is godly in as much as it is alien. It is not. It is not like you. That like you're you're all really weird, sat around this table or crouched underneath this table or disassembling this table and pushing it into your coat made out of rat bodies. But. <laughs> Oh, fresh crutches! <laughs> but um, <laughs> this is uh, this this is a huge amount of power. This is this is um, uh, you know um, I mean parts based on the book and film Annihilation, uh, and so it is it is the it is the impact site. It is the crater. It is the alien. There is something vast and nightmarish, and it shouldn't be here. Every time you've come across this, it's been at arm's length. It's been an echo of it. Someone's told you about it. You've caught someone's eyes and you've and like you've felt it. Um, and this is right here on your doorstep right now. And that's that's pretty scary. Stopping it, no. 
No, this is this is this is beyond this is beyond the limits of your power to stop. You could slow it, and you could get people out of here, but it's not it's not you cannot uh, you cannot stop this process. Uh, then I will turn to the rest of the group and say, I carry with me the souls who have gone before. Some may consider such a thing unnatural. But I assure you, every single one of these souls were of this world, and therefore completely natural. The thing above us is not of this world. It is not natural, and it threatens to upset the natural order and annihilate all that is good and proper. Now, it is my mission to shepherd as many souls away from its all-consuming power as possible. I can do that carrying them myself, or they can walk of their own accord. I, Lind, yes. Lind, you've never been more excited. I <laughs> hereby request, would you all be willing to aid me, yes. to aid us. And the eyes begin to glow again in this effort. A thousand times, yes. Yes, Piper, say yes. Piper, say yes. 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 Although I would see that thing up there is a false god. It is nothing compared to a royalty down below, 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 below. Right, yeah, so I'm thinking maybe that philosophical discussion should possibly wait, like, until we're not all in imminent doom. Um, so, souls, great, sounds good, love that, but there's also maybe some living people here, and we should probably get them out. Like, oh yeah, there's like, yeah, there's like, there's like, I'm gonna say 60 to 100 people, like, the camera tilts, and they're all, like, doing stuff. <laughs> Like just, oh yeah, that was what Robin vegetables. meant. Yeah, he they're meant, chopping up he, vegetables, they're weaving. Yeah, their, he's um, saying, I can either kill those people mm. and take their souls down, yeah. or we can just have them walk. Those um, are our options, but they can't stay here. And Gethin kind of like clutches his um, his badge a little bit, like almost, it's almost like a um, nervous habit to fiddle with it. And he's like, I'm, I'm glad we've got a backup plan, but let's let's try to get him to walk. How's that? If I can get in contact with Aeond, my sister, she may be able to convince the others to leave. But if they refuse, wouldn't be so bad if the heart got what the heart desired, would it? You have spent, you have spent the last six years, ten years, I don't know how long, trying to, trying to get to the heart. And it's coming to you. It's dropping out of the fucking ceiling. What a day! What a day, Lynn! Oh, it's glorious. It's so glorious, but... Oh, but, Aeon... Let's... Uh, for Aeon's sake, try to convince them to leave, and if they don't, I'll just... Oh, let's just help the heart. <laughs> Just help it. Beautiful. Save um, a bunch of people from imminent death. She's still chewing on some of this bacon. Sounds like a good day. Knocks back the rest of her drink, picks up the, the chest plate she was using as a as a skillet and just slams it back on her armor, still hot, and just shoulders her, her hammer, stands up and is like, All right, who are we saving first? <laughs> So let's let's work out um, let's work out so, so to give you a description of how, of how this is all set up. Um, we've got the it seems like the main yeah there's two four roofs. One of these roofs you're on, and there are a few people milling around. They're like it's like uh, it's like tower blocks next to each other. They're all the same height. Uh, one of these roofs you're on, um, and there is some uh, some. As I said, there's people like there's people doing weaving. They're like uh, they're taking spider silk and weaving mm -hmm. it into shawls and jumpers and gloves and the like. Um, there uh, there are some people like preparing food and that sort of thing. General sort of you know generic NPC townsfolk shit. Um, over um, over on the far side uh, is uh, is the is the 
I, I will say every single roof here is covered in these enormous, these like these, these big monoliths bearing the names of the people who've lived here before in an effort to remember them. And they spiral around. It seems like you don't have to read the names, they just have to be there. So it's like they're not legible or they're carved over each other or the, the, the words are jumbled up or they're spiraling around. But there's this, 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 this cacophony of letters. And the more important you were, the more important you were to this one full cult, um, the bigger your name is. And the 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 upper levels are a bit like um, how whenever you drive under a motorway bridge, someone sprayed graffiti on it somehow on the side. You never see it happen, do you? But they're always there. <laughs> um, that that kind of graffiti is is lining, uh, but like it's been carved into the rock. Is 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 lining the uh, not rock concrete is lining the upper levels of the building. Um, on the far side, we have we have the the, the primary, um, the the primary headquarters of the Swanfall cult, where Ventrix Alabaster holds court. We can see there is a. Now I realise now, I realise now. I called it Swanfall. I should have called it Swan Dive, <laughs> or something else, because there's no swans here, mm. but. Death of the author. There's a huge fucking swan. There is a uh, there is a there, there, there is a statue of a swan with its with its uh, with its arms spread wide and its neck broken. Big, powerful, muscular, sexy neck broken. Um, and and the wings spread out, uh, welcoming people. And this has been made out of all kinds of cobbled together nonsense. It's not like it's been beautifully. Not like the sculptures you were used to seeing up Spire and. Uh, this is, uh, it looks like part of this is actually a swan, but um, that's been treated in some way. Um, and, we, uh, and we can see the various um, fluttering uh, devotional banners and candles uh, streaming and smoking in the wind from there. Um, and then there are two other rooms with stuff on. Uh, I'm going to say uh, there's one, uh, there's one oh, on the one on the right, there's the Temple to the Moon Beneath, uh, where Kasha is, a, a, not a temple, sorry, a shrine. Uh, which takes the form of a sort of orrery of of uh, there's a um, yeah okay um, there's there's multiple moons um, which which like you know there's there's only one moon or maybe there's three moons and there's been an awful lot of uh, schisms about that uh, but there is there is an orrery run by Kasha um, who scries from here. Um, and then I can't think of anything interesting to the fourth roof. Any ideas? Uh, I would like to propose that it is um, the swan's less presumptuous brother, just a goose. A uh, goose. A goose. Just, oh. just a shit goose. In fact, I mentioned the... Um... Have you ever seen a goose's mouth? It's the single horrifying. most horrifying thing. It's horrifying. got teeth, it's a serrated tongue, serrated beak. It, it, just, In fact, just the mouth of the goose makes up the entire yes. room. So you, you've ever, have you ever asked a goose what it thinks about your fucking mouth? <laughs> <laughs> One have, time. Have you ever seen a human's mouth? It's disgusting. Soft. Oh, pallid like a worm. How are you meant to chew graph with them, Nash? Go out there, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Grass with them, Nash. God damn it. It's got, it's, got, it's got these horrible, oh, hard, bony protrusions at the front, which they used to rip apart meat like a beast. Oh, it's disgusting. At least I've not got a tongue like a bread knife, you fuck. God. <laughs> I like to think this is an in-character rant. We just have never seen the inside of a curse's mouth. The piper just reaches up and just pats her on the back. It's like, hey, sorry, hey, sorry. The swan, I can understand. The goose, that's just fucking insane. The goose, uh, the goose, uh, I'm going to say there is a... We, I mentioned the uh, the ascensionists, what are they called? The guys who burn corpses rather than throw them off the roof. Um, so uh, let's let's put them in here. Um, we'll have their uh, we'll have their their sign is is an in, is a, a, an inverted bird. Uh, so a, a, a bit like the a bit bit like the fish um, on on Jesus's mates. Um, yeah, 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 like yeah, like that. But it's an inverted bird. Uh, there, there, there's there is the mark of the upside down um, of the of, I guess the non. Fuck, keep, keep going, keep going. Um, this is where they burn the bodies. Um, Gethin, you know about this. You're not really into the whole Swanfall deal. 
this is this this isn't just a job for you, but you are looking after people here. Um, but like you like you're aware of the of the challenges between the two cults, and I'll say as well, um, Ken, you're you've you've lived and worked here long enough to know that oh, some of these bands getting getting caught up in their silly ideas about either burning bodies or throwing them off a thirty story building. They're also focused on death. They don't take a chance to live, really, honestly. Yeah, I mean, their ideology of it makes it a little bit hard for me to keep them alive, which is the whole thing. I know, it's a real pain, isn't it? You know, they're just always chucking themselves as to, oh my gosh. We might actually be in for a bit of a, a, bit of a challenge, honestly, actually, trying to get this lot out of here. Oh, yeah, they might take it as an invitation. Shit. Yeah, you I mean, I mean, like, I mean, at that point, it's a you have evacuated high rise. Well, or has high rise evacuated itself? Um, I, I did not, I did not say get the people out safely. Okay, the goal is to evacuate high rise. Noted. Uh, I would say probably I'm okay with not getting out safely as long as their souls are intact. Mm. Put all the souls in my soul bucket. <laughs> Well, I can hear them slosh. I just shake my gun. <laughs> oh, horrifying! Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, so, what is the scheme? We can split the party if we'd like. We can go in different directions. We can all just run around like the fucking brunes and visit every single house in order. Um, what is what? What do you think about? We're in no rush. Based. Oh, after you. Oh, after I was Gethin. just going to say. So, uh, Ventrix, as I understand it, is kind of running the show right now, yeah? Ventrix is is the most prominent member of the Swanfall cult and is and is like uh you've you spoke to Ventrix to get some to get some of your things that you need. Um because uh, they are they are a powerful and influential person here. Um and in fact yeah um the in fact the only other NPC I've written so we've got Eon uh who is who is who is Lynn's sister. Mm -hmm. Uh actually sorry Lynn what did you call her? Aeon? Aeon. Aeon? Great. Cool. Love it. If there was an O in there somewhere. It's, it's floating. Yeah, like, that's, that's fine by me. Um, we have Aeon, the cultist. Um, so Aeon uh, will probably be in this one for place. Uh, we have Ventrix Alabaster, the high priest. Now, uh, Ed, you are down to kill her. So I've yeah. got I've got to believe Piper really I, doesn't like her. I've got to believe that you have some history here. Um, like we can we can sort of you know, zhuzh it around or what have you, but th like the idea of like uh, for what she's done to you and yours, I'm trying to work out how she's wronged you in the past. What do we think it is? Well, she and her swanfold cult, one by one by one, stamping out any opposing religions that might stand in opposition. Mm. The drowned queen has been pushed further and further and further into the water. That cannot stand. Okay, cool. Yes, I like that. Um, we we smash back to uh, to you wearing a far smaller cape uh, made out of rats with a far less blue and, and only one cosmetic crutch um, as uh, as the, the 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 cult of the drowned queen who'd set up around this sort of uh, a sort of yeah like a, a coven I suppose worshiping it like a, like a, like the way witches might worship a, the Satan or what have you um, or I don't know, who is it? Who is it? Well, I mean, I've seen the films, which is worship Satan. Is it? Is it? Yeah, is it? Is it, is, is it the Watchtowers? Yeah, Baphomet. Yeah, Satan's mate. Is it? Or is it? Is, is it the Watchtowers that they have a word with? You know, yes. it's the Watchtower of the North, a Wind Tower. Oh, Shit, um... I'm right. I'm right. We've got to have a couple of witches in chat. Anyway, are you, are you trying to like conjure the craft memes here? Is that what's going on? <laughs> sure, sure. Why not? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But the um, they were. Uh, it's quite hard to get seawater down here to get salt water. So mm. like making salt water and then like scrying in a pool of salt water in an abandoned department and like and like warding to keep the ghosts away. Uh, and the uh, the uh, Ventrix Alabaster, a much younger looking well, 10, 10, 15 years Ventrix Alabaster, um, comes in. Uh, she looks like a. Oh, she looks like. Daughter than you'd imagine, short, quite stocky. Uh, she has a she has a like a, a, a religious style hat is the word I have, but like <laughs> like one of these guys, you know, up here. Um, 
like and a uh, and, and a big uh like uh Oh, like a nun's uh, wimp, the thing habit. Yes, habit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the 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 kind of cool curtains they have on their hat that nuns have. Uh, that, but it's feathers, and it goes all the way down the back. And these and these are these are feathers from uh, which she claims have been bought to her by thankful ghosts. The idea is that uh, that, that you clutch uh, you clutch uh, albino crow feathers when you leap off the side of the building, and they are uh, they are to to. to Properly assuage the ghosts to translate, acts as a sort of psychopomp. Acts as a sort of psychopomp to transfer you down, transfer your spirit across the ghosts. And each one of these, she claims, is 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 from a thankful ghost uh, that has been uh, placated. Uh, she she storms in, furious eyes eyes glowing with rage. A um, couple of guys uh, dressed in cult gear, so they've got like they've, they've got an awful lot of like. Um, a lot of these feathers, a lot of claws uh, from from these crows, crow beaks, crow skulls, just your general crow theme. Uh, and I like to imagine like quite a lot of like leather armbands as well for some reason, and like uh, like uh, the, the things which archers have on their yeah. arms, but they don't. I don't know. It's just, it's just an aesthetic thing. Um, they uh, they uh, the 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 face of the queen was scintillating, beautiful, shimmering in the seawater, and you can see her her beautiful round ears at the top of her head, a long, elegant suit, <laughs> her gossamer whiskers, um, her uh, the, her enormous scale, because she's an extra dimensional being. Just like, um, and you were, you were, that was the first time that you communed with the, with the drowned queen. And <laughs> as uh, you, you are, you are uh, roused from your, Reverie by one of the one of these big lads overturning the basin of salt water <laughs> spreads the uh, the queen no. so, um, says to you. Um, it's all in fact it's all a bit like that bit in Lord of the Rings where Kate Blanchett's like. <laughs> <laughs> all will love me and despair. Poor Piper's despairing yeah. hard. Oh yeah. no! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and everyone is uh, is thrown through the remnants of the of the broken windows is forcibly sacrificed against their will uh they are uh, there is a uh there's a each each one of these guys has has an albino crow uh which they which which, which they've got sort of like strapped to their body they get that um clamp clamp it in in the hands clamp it in your hands actually the ghost and you can see this is all happening around you clamped in your hands and then bound tight with the with those leather straps and the crow's like pecking at you and you can't get away um, and then everyone is hurled out of the window onto the streets below. And if you hadn't landed in the fountain, you would have died. But thankfully, the water managed to break your fall and you were able to descend in there. You think, you, you think, you know the queen saved you. You know that you were chosen of the queen. And that fountain is not deep enough to successfully um, couch a 15 story fall. But um, when when you hit it, you like you you felt the queen's embrace as the as, as the water tasted salty in your mouth, and the crow stopped stopped bucking and kicking. And then the next thing you know is you woke up, you woke up on the streets of uh, of Well Station. Uh, so it's called um, uh, Well is the place beneath. High rise. It's the original. So, Well Station was the original um, name of the place. It was built as an ideal drow community. Uh, the idea being that um, they they could live this close to the heart and then commute in on the train to wherever they were working, which was really good. But unfortunately, they plugged the train directly into hell, and you know the rest. Ah, Hemel Hempstead. Got it. Mm. Waking up in this uh, in this fountain mm. and. In this reverie, sort of crow still just like, it's like flapping around. Immediately, just Piper looks it in the eye, and its pink eyes just staring back, and slowly just begins to push it down into the water, just pushing it as it just flails and flaps and screams and caws until it goes still. Yeah, we see uh, like like in the uh, out of focus behind you, like the other bodies of the people in your cult are like 
tumbling down spiraling feathers and smacking into the ground and the ghosts are like like you can see um well you can't see you're busy drowning a crow but every um the the ghosts come around and you can see these um pallid half dead fully dead um pallid ghoulish sunken faced specters um uh touching at the touching at the bodies of the the broken mangled bodies of the fallen um and ge gen uh, gently almost try like pulling them back in to the buildings but these spirits are weak and even though there were even though there are hundreds of them uh they are they are gently tugging at these at these bodies trying to bring them back indoors um and yes yeah, so, so 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 you've met her yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah you know her. yeah not a fan. Not a fan. <clears throat> As the piper just continues to just clip clop forward, just following Lind wherever she's going. So what's uh, the thought here, folks? Do we try to convince her to mobilize some people? I know that uh, mileage may vary on your opinion of her, but she also might just tell everybody now's the time, so I'm not really... What do you think? Lind throws a backwards glance to the piper and then to Gethin just says throw her body to the heart slit her fucking throat let her bleed I do not care she has stolen a sister and much more I am sure let us kill her where she stands and hope that the rest just flee or yeah I mean yeah <laughs> he just kind of shrugs and he's like, uh, I feel like we could try to convince her to convince people and then you can kill her. But... I have an alternate plan that could work. Perhaps we reverse the order of what you are suggesting, Gethin. Perhaps we slaughter her, throw her empty husk of a body to the heart, and I channel her soul, raising her spirit as a martyr to guide her people to safety, even in the face of oblivion. I like the face, dear. Yeah, I like the way you think. It feels effective. Let's go. That oh, sounds pretty good. One caveat. <laughs> Gonna have to evacuate all these people out here. There's these walkways won't carry. They won't. They won't last with this many people going over them. We you might to, need an down. escape route. I now. I think there might still be an engine down in Well Station. If we need a quick way of getting a lot of folk out, we could try. I could try get the engine running. Give us somewhere to lead these people. After the yes. face stealing thing, I. Channel them down to the station. Make sure the majority <sighs> of them are unharmed. It's a good plan. Would Make sure worth... some survive. Would it be yeah. worth splitting our efforts? Great plan. So that, Love it. so that perhaps Lind, the Piper, and I take care of the priestess, whilst you, who, Gethin and Quinn, Make sure that the the followers of the priestess will have somewhere to go. Yeah, I mean, we're stronger in numbers, but we don't have time like that. You go. We'll take care of the people. We'll secure Stay your escape route. <laughs> I just sort of nod, and then everyone loses track of where I am. <laughs> You're just in the next scene waiting. Yeah, I'm just kind of already there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lind cautiously like uh like pulls up the Piper's uh rat cape just in case he's under there <laughs> and comes back out like uh Is it's like Super Mario 3. I'm like backstage taking a smoke, just like <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. How many hours of this? I think Little to Lassie. Gethin turns to Quinn and uh goes, All right, and like taps his badge and goes, just the three of us. Let's go. And Quinn will call back because you'll check like this like gauge on her wrist, which is like a crude timepiece. And she's like, "All right, so dinner will be in about five hours. So I'll train station by then. Okay, make sure to take care of yourselves in the meantime, and bring all your friends. We'll get everyone. We'll get everyone out. No worries. We'll take care of it. All right, have fun. 
with the face stealing. Uh, oh my gosh, what are the kids into these days? <laughs> face stealing and murder, it feels like, but that's pretty standard down here. Shall mm. we? Aye, right, let's get to it. Okay, so, so sorry, uh, Sita, you said just the three of us. Were you referring to the magical badge that you carry? Yeah. Or was that, uh, okay, well, cool, yeah. Uh, so the whole hound thing is, unless mm. you're one of the original hounds, you've had that bestowed on you. Uh, mm -hmm. Right, so I feel that, and you have probably all encountered this a little bit with Gethin, but um, he's kind of personified the badge as the person who owned it last, mm. um, and so he, he's he's decided that uh, he has he's carrying on their legacy essentially. So not that he actually thinks that the badge is a real person, uh, but he's just like, yeah, you know. The hounds, the one that came before me, the ones that will come after me, we're here. So that's his, that's his whole vibe. Nice. I feel like he was just a druggie when he came down here, but when he had, when he inherited the badge from someone, mm. uh, he, that's when he started really digging into that heart of gold vibe. <laughs> um, beautiful. All right. Um, so we have, we've, we've got... Three members of the party. Ed has just gone to answer the door. Uh, we have we, so three members of the party are going to go and attempt to assassinate a, um, or talk to, or then assassinate and talk to, a, uh, a cult leader, Ventrix Alabaster, and the other two are going to try and do some evacuation. Um, mm -hmm. Where do you think the best place is to start the evacuation, Elaine? Uh, so there's the four towers. Um, do I know which one? Well, station yep. is under. Uh, so yeah, well, station is in. My concept of it was that it was in the middle, mm -hmm. um, but I reckon that you could probably like you could prob you're heavy enough to just kick a hole down there. I imagine if you're wearing <laughs> full plate made out mm -hmm. of trains, um, mm -hmm. so like you, you like um, this is the heart, uh, and you're near a Missian station, so you can get in from pretty much anywhere. But I like I like to imagine there's this sort of big central plaza, but uh, uh, in the in in the middle, and there's this big a a, a big. Uh, uh, it's a hexagonal building uh, with, mm -hmm. with 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 uh, with three three entrances and exits in it. Um, with uh, with uh, and it looks it looks a bit like a well, mm -hmm. and that is that is the level of that's the level of smart that the Elphir architects were running to. Beautiful. All right. Well, I reckon if we can get our way down there, we could be running around these towers all day trying to get folk to drop their livelihoods behind, kicking in doors and everything. I think we make them come to us. If we can get an engine running, if we can get the siren going, mm. folk will come out to see what's going on, and then we can try and get them going. I think we kick our way down there, Maybe see what's going on. Maybe a bigger hole in it, so that, I mean, if some people fall down there, like, you know, maybe some of them will say, I don't know. Let's, yeah, you've got a good idea. Let's do it. It's a delve! Tremendous news, everyone. Uh, so, so, yeah, you've got to get through 30 floors of ghosts. Um, this will be a delve. I guess I don't have to tell you. Oh boy, I sure wish we'd brought someone who could manipulate spirits with us when we're going down through. <laughs> no, don't worry about it. I um can. Hunt. I have a gun. Uh... <laughs> and I have a hammer. And these cigarettes. Okay, yeah. Um, no, the ghosts. Uh, yeah, the ghosts aren't really. Uh... They're, they're not the sort of fun video game ghosts you can hit with hammers and shoot with guns. Um, mm. Actually, no, sorry, they are. They've got, they've got like protection ten or some shit. I think so. Like they they ignore damage unless you find whatever's unless unless you hit them with something important from their life. So it's mainly about ghost mm. mitigation. Mm -hmm. gonna, but we'll call it. The... I'm gonna Jurassic Park these ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you are, CJ. <laughs> Beautiful. I have none. Uh, I have none of the re re requisite skills to do so, but I sure am gonna try. Well, you can wonderfully. You can actually, if you haven't changed your character sheet, you can make them fuck off by staring. Yeah, actually, you, I can. Yeah. You, so I am gonna Jurassic the Park the, gro the ghosts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant. Um, I guess to the ghosts, because of the hound badge, it might seem to them like you are like just one person with millions of ghosts uh, in you. That's, oh, that's a great idea. Oh, that's, that's much horrifying. better than just upsetting them. I love that. That's great. Just got the side. Mm. That's neat. Okay. So we'll call it a delve of ten. Uh, can I get the first roll off either one of you who's delving? 
Um, I, I believe, Elaine, you've got the skill as default. I do. Yeah. Uh, what um, the domain again, is it? Uh, we'll go for desolate or haven. Okay. So I just haven have up here, and it gets more desolate. Sorry? Dogs. That's cool. So I just have my base 10, and then I have Dell. So that is a whopping nine on my first roll. Diggity pig. Great. Uh, you that, that's that's deep or stress mm -hmm. uh, on the delve. Do do do. Uh, that is three. Be, 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 be. Great, fantastic news. Okay, cool. Um, spying well sta uh, well stationed through the smoke and the yeah smoke and the this the huge clouds of of of, of albino crows. Um, you uh, you. You start your way down, uh, and the first the first three four stories are largely unoccupied by ghosts, um, and then everything starts to get a bit spookier once you hit the uh, the like fourth fifth floor going back down. Uh, there's a uh, frost starts to rhyme on the windows. Um, the, the 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 there's the sense of something skittering around inside your armor. Um, oh, oh. Oh, that's oh. some bacon. Bacon? No. Oh no, we're good. Sorry, is it, don't worry. Just is it we, Warambe? We, we check for Warambe. Always check for Warambe. <laughs> Hello. Warabe, Warabe. I'm not I Warambe. Am not Warambe. I am Warambe. Jeez, oh. <laughs> but I have his spirit with me. <laughs> the mightiest warrior of God. I, 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 love, I, love, I love doing the voice. Um and uh, everything gets pretty fucking spooky. Thanks to whoever backed, we we're, were 45 seconds off wrapping this up. Um, it gets pretty fucking spooky. But um, uh, you you come down into a lobby um, as as the as the the staircase which you're walking down is partially uh, has collapsed, and so there's no safe way down through it anymore. So you come out into the lobby uh, and down to, down to find an alternate route to escape and you see uh, uh you see those ghosts uh those aforementioned hungry ghosts those specters uh swarming out of the um swarming out of the doorways they don't open the doors obviously because they're ghosts they come through um and they look they look tired they look hungry they look ravenous they look ghoulish they are they're they're, they're all drow mostly drow uh, yeah, mostly try a couple of humans, um, and they're all they're all dressed in uh, what look to be uh, for our equivalent Victorian like tatty Victorian clothing. So like it's about a hundred years out of date the clothes they're wearing, and they are um, they each each one of them which doesn't have uh, let's say that a few of them like their sh their shirts have come open or their clothes have ripped or what have you. You can see there's there's a scar. Down there, like it's big, nasty, messy scar, um, and uh, uh, neither of you are particularly etherically inclined. Um, we'll go for pin. You like you can see there's like there's a there's an horrible miasma, just sort of like peeking out at the sides, uh, like a, a a void, much like Jess's eyes. Um, and as you as you um. As you walk down the corridor, you you realise that you have been surrounded by these ghosts, and we'll cut to our other group. Our other group, uh, back back up top side. Uh, um, you you were going to go just you're going to kick. What what? How are you going to approach this one for? You're going to kick in the door. You're going to sneak in. How many you... cultists does it look like they are? There are around the building. Um, so yeah, so there are. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you a better description. We've got the we've got the big swan statue. Uh, with the broken neck, we've got various uh, sort of shanty town, kind of a permanent shanty town vibe going on. So everything's been sort of built up around here. Uh, I'd say there's about ten to fifteen like devotees outside, and these people are uh, they're doing they're, they're doing various cult duties such as like 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 uh, chipping names into the wall, uh, redacting names of people who who uh, who Ventrix has become upset with. Uh, gathering feathers uh, and adorning themselves, um, and uh, an awful lot of them are in what they call communion, um, which is standing on the edge of the building with their arms spread and imagining falling. 
Um, so, you know, really pushable. That's the thing, that's the thing you wanted to do. Uh, it's a very yeah. big, this is Sparta driving. I'm going really. to say, I'm going to say there's, um, I will say like, this is Sparta. I think that that really had a powerful message where it was like, no, I refuse to pay. Whereas if the Persian, if the Persian guy didn't know that, that, uh, that Butler was there and was facing away and he kicked him. Yeah. Momentum would have just carried Dif him. Yeah. <laughs> different, different vibe. Um, you, uh, yes, yeah, so it's about 15. Um, no one here is especially hearty or hell. Um, and like, like the three of you, um, are, are noticeable, like, like you are, you're movers and shakers as it were. So like, like you are, you are a cut above these people in terms of what you can command, what you can do. Um, and they are, they are slightly, they're, they're slightly distrustful of you. Like they're always happy to have visitors to, uh, to high rise because it's quite an isolated place and visitors bring news and post and trade goods and stuff like that. Um, but they uh, have you have you spoken to your sister here yet, or is, is is this the first time you're making contact? This will be the first time making contact Racking. since uh, we went. We were estranged six years ago. Cool. In which uh, in which case, um, a few a few people turn to look at you, um, but they are like they are they are doing their best to focus on their <laughs> ritual observances, and they are like they're they're less interested you in in, in in you than the other folk were who were chopping up. Uh, pigeons or what have you um I'm making roulades uh lind will quickly just take a step back towards uh warabe and piper and just say under her breath if we can get close to my sister knowing her tenacity she will be close to albasta if we find her we will find her too too many hers but both hers so let us seek out my sister. That will allow us access to the nest. But a word of warning. Beware crows disguised as swans. Yes, I Piper. Follow you exactly. <clears throat> and with that, uh, Lind will sort of stride forward confidently. Um, towards the doors of the uh sort of the the vessel with the swan with the outstretched arms on top oh yeah yeah you 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 walk in like you own the place basically um inside it looks to be they they fashioned together a uh, imagine like like like, a, like almost like a rural church if you imagine the scale of the things a rural like a rural church on top of a tower block uh, they fashioned it out of bits of masonry they found out of loose bits of out of stuff that's fallen down from the oil rig above that sort of thing so it's all very mishmashed uh, and it's been painted this um sticky gray white um like uh, like like a uh, uh, slopped on paint almost like almost like bird shit um and every, there's there's these there's these uh big windows looking out over the side but there's no glass in them because you know um and then it juts off the side mm. of the building uh to where the to where the procession occurs there's these uh there's these there's this big uh there's two two braziers on either side in fact the camera uh, the camera like you're you're st you're you're stalking up the middle of the of the uh church um ed i like to imagine that you're i don't know like are you are you showing your face are you going in you've got history here what's the deal i i think probably following lind but the stooped posture of the piper bends over even more almost to the point where he's literally dragging himself across the floor just on his hands and crutches alone he is keeping low to the ground mm -hmm. and behind her you can see the voluminous raiments of fur and rat tails just sort of sliding from side to side but yeah he's his face is hidden for the most cool. part give me a sneak religion i think religion okay so Remind me how this works again. So I mm. roll one d10, and I also have religion checked. So I add another d10. That's correct. And you tell me what the highest one is. 
Lovely. A nine. Oh, yes, yes. Um, you manage to look like any common large blue rat. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, you are. Um, you managed to like you. The the all, all you had to do was look slightly less interesting than the witch, and you've done that. So congratulations. Um, the witch stalks down the center. You scurry along behind her. The camera comes out through one of those windows and pans around. Apparently, the born the born identity theme music plays. Oh my god, it's Wurabi! Is Wurabi with us, or is Wurabi like hidden in the shadows and coming through? Yeah, Wurabi, what's the deal? Yeah, so as soon as it was like, we need to find these people, Warabe uh, stopped paying attention to what the others were doing mm. and started trying to focus through the spiritual power, uh, through his connection to the spirit world uh, and try and locate their essences. He's trying to locate their essences because he knows if he can find them, he can get there. Uh, by what he's not even sure how but he'll be there at some point so is there a role that i can make to just essentially divine their location yeah absolutely and that'll be a uh, discern plus religion okay uh i have religion okay cool all right uh two so dice. that's gonna be two yeah all right two so... ten, tell, me, tell me the highest okay uh that's a 10. Woo! well done everyone you, you, you've managed, everyone Everyone here so far has managed to bypass the fun part of heart, which is where, <laughs> which is where I get to hurt you. But that's fine, yes. Um, <clears throat> you're already in position on a 10. Um, All right. Uh, <laughs> can, I, uh, can I stand, can I walk up next to Lynn's sister? Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, like, Jeremy, I'm going to carry on describing the scene. You tell me when you arrive. All right. And, and from yeah. where. Yes. Um, the camera pans around uh, born born identity din, 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 music country um and we see those two big burning braziers um on either side uh, and there is there is the the wretched stink of burning feathers um cuz i guess they're also they're also burned but they're also sacred let's call those let's call those offerings in some way um and the uh interestingly enough do you know why the phrase eat pro exists no. Uh, his crows taste fucking awful. Um, that like to eat crow is something which you like, like, so I, I think, I think it, it's an Americanism, I believe, which means to like, um, take your lumps, like, 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 oh, you've made your bed now, now lie on it. Um, and, and the reason why is because crows are absolutely disgusting to eat. Um, and they're cooking them here. They are like they they are they, they are taking these they're taking al albino crows which have died or which have let's say they're no longer uh, laying eggs um, or they're injured to the point where they can't be uh, useful to the cult anymore and they are burning their bodies on these funeral pyres. So there's this reek of like off chicken and burnt feathers um, and probably some kind of narcotic smoke mixed in there as well. Uh, we can see the uh, Ventrix Alabaster is stood uh, an an older looking woman now. Uh, she has a quite the idea of her having some sort of prosthetic, uh, a, like a uh, a prosthetic, yeah, a prosthetic arm made out of like light avian bones lashed together um, with like so. There's all kinds of weird uh, clockworks and the like in there, and you can see that there's 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 glass vials. Um, Plugging her blood into the thing, and each one of them, yeah, each one of the men's with a beat, we'll say, um, but not like a meh, 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 beat. I think it's sealed. It's not like not like Pac-Man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and she, uh, she's, she's, uh, she's turning over a feather in her hands, uh, and people, are, people are hurriedly speaking to her, uh, and she's. Oops, She's just ignoring them and focusing on this feather and focusing on the on on something else. Uh, sitting in the pew, you see Aeond. Aeonid? Aeira. Jess, what's she called again? Aeond. Aeond. You see Aeond, your sister. Your sister looks the spit of you, except she hasn't been she hasn't she hasn't been fully infested with the witch virus. 
like that that nightmare thing up there that's dripping down, which which honestly upset the the dogman badass with a gun full of ghosts. Uh, you've been you've been actively trying to get as much of that bad boy directly jacked into your veins for the last six years as possible. Um, so you look a bit weird now. You're all a bit gangly and strange. Um, and your sister's been like washing her clothes and eating regular <laughs> meals and sleeping like under a roof in a bed. Oh. Uh, yeah. Um, so it's there's a so like the the pair of you look very similar, but 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 she sat down and she. Uh, she recognizes you first. I can't believe it's really you. I can't believe it's really you. It's not safe here. Come. Um, and she 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 reaches up and grabs your hand, and your sister grabs your hand. You haven't you haven't seen her in six years. Uh, and she uh, she she wraps an arm around you, steps over the rat. Um, steps over the the junk mage and leads you to the like back to, back towards the front of the church why have you come here save you to rescue you heart heart is dying heart is exploding heart is everything and nothing it is going to consume us all you need to leave renounce the cult get out of here i'm glad to see you haven't changed um <laughs> We were always very uh, different, sister. I admit. So I, the, the. I need you to believe me. I, I need you to you, look into you, it. She's, um, she's just sort of like, puts her hands, these dirty, nasty hands, on this this pure face that she's only seen in dreams, uh, and just is like, <laughs> sister, you need to listen to me now. We have not a lot of time. No, no, you please go. Please, high rise has stood for a hundred years and it will stand for a hundred more just that our, our leader is i don't think she's very well she's she's saying it's the end of things she's saying that we all need to jump off and i don't no 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 you need not to jump off you need to follow me your blood your kin you follow me in my directions renounce this cultish bullshit. leave it to the dogs just Follow give me, me, give me a uh, obviously compel a cult or compel religion. Compel, or oh, if you had said a cult, I would have had two. Oh, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't mind. Oh, let's go with two proficiencies then. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. all right. Because so you're, 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 I'm compelling, compelling the about cult. the occult. Yeah, I am. If, uh, so 4d10, or is it just an extra one? Three, three, three. three, three. Start with one, get two. Start with one, yeah. Too used to doubling up. Oh, so the strongest of that is a ten, and then oh, I've got a great. nine oh, and fine. an eight. Fine. Ooh, that was nice. You immediately, you immediately bring her on board. Um, um, like there's a there's a. So it's true. I um. Yes. Okay, I'll go with you, but she won't. I've yeah. I've become rather important here. And, and she won't let she won't let me go. That means, okay. This is, this is what I need you to do. Tell her to tell the others to leave now. She will not live to see the end of this. I promise you. Okay. Okay. Do it now. Go. Oh, and with that, like, um, uh, Lind just sort of turns her gently and pushes her on the back. You need, uh, you need back to kill her. Oh. It is too late for that. It is okay. too late for that end. I am sorry. Um, she, uh, she... We give her one, one chance alone for her to do this, and then I. it is... She looks down to the piper. It is simply out of my hands. It's in God's hands. It is in God's hands, exactly. Um, exactly, darling. Go, go now. Uh, she, like, there's... <sighs> this is a hell of a day, because she woke up and... Her cult leader said that everyone had to throw themselves off the side of the building, and they're kind of negotiating that now. And then her sister showed up, and her sister's a full blood heart infected witch. Uh, so, like, so you know, like, not not the easiest Tuesday, um, but she uh, she gathers herself, uh, oh, smooths down the feathers on the front of her robes, um, and walks forward. And um, you can see, like, uh, as as she approaches, she lays a hand on the people who are conferring with uh, with with Ventrix and just speaks. You can't hear anything. 
uh, it's over the rushing wind outside. She's too far away. She puts a hand on the shoulder, and those people, those people pass away and um, uh, walk off. They don't die. Um, your sister and um, places a hand on Ventrix's shoulder, uh, on the the kind of the the, the the one with the prosthetic, and there's like you can see the the raw fucking malice in Ventrix's eyes that someone's touched her and that someone's trying to talk her out of this and as 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 you can see your sister getting like more and more like imploring and trying to understand Ventrix is getting Ventrix is pulling herself up to her full height oh no 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 <laughs> no um, one's going to and, 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 and starts facing off starts takes a step towards your sister your sister takes a step back towards the edge She's in, as the she, sister takes a mm -hmm. step back towards the edge, can I just sort of grab her hand to pull her back on and then shoot Ventrix in the head? <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. absolutely. Yeah, yeah, tremendous. <laughs> Love it. You're like, so, so are you? Are you like underneath the the balcony? Do you sort of come up and? I I think you? how I experience this is as I I look deep within myself, leading mm -hmm. into the spiritual world, uh, and I the eyes of the mask begin glowing back when I'm outside. Uh, and the a little bit of backstory about the mask. Mm. The mask was kind of what set me on this journey. Uh, we often use, uh, we often, uh, the gnolls often use uh, various receptacles to, to house and control various spiritual entities. And I sort of found this uh, as like what I thought was, people thought it was maybe like junk or something, mm -hmm. but I made contact with it. And there is a spirit inside of an Aelfir named Bultun Jin, uh, who essentially was a radical, was a radical uh, Aelfir. Uh, who believe who was in favor of breaking down the cultural hostilities and mm -hmm. merging uh, the various cultures wherever possible, creating mm -hmm. unity between all people. Uh, and so by sort of collecting souls, I'm eliminating all those who stand in the way of this unity uh, and also bringing them a form of unity while also trying to show that there is a way for cultures to coexist and even thrive together. Uh, you don't have to... Uh, and so as I'm like sinking in, I think I, I, I lose track of my physical body and I see not only Bultun Jin, but all of the spirits that I have collected uh, just sort of in this ethereal uh, void plane, uh, this endless ethereal void plane. And I pass through, I like walk along and they sort of light up as I, uh, as I pass by close by them each of them and i'm looking for the one that has the closest proximity uh in terms of its spiritual resonance with uh with lynn's sister and when i finally find that one i step into that one's uh spiritual form and mm -hmm. pretty much as one i step out of the darkness cool. grab the sister and shoot the lady in the head so i have i didn't i don't know how i got here i'm just here no, no, no. I, I will say uh, impressively you've managed to Improvise another heart class, which is the Dead Walker, and you've, you've, you've actively just described their core power. So yeah, shoots me down to the ground. I love it. Yeah, you you uh, you appear, grab her, and spin her. Um, and like uh, as as the um, yeah, okay, we'll have we'll have the we'll, we'll have the camera behind uh, behind Aeon's shoulder, and that that blood is starting to drip down again, and like 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 the the, the blood rain is increasing. Um. Just before hey. I pull the trigger, I say, "It's time for you to fall." Uh, yeah. And then yeah, and 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 I like that you say that in in the gray, like in the in the spirit world. She hears it, and then <laughs> you come out. Give me a tax yeah. break, please. So that will be um, kill religion. Okay, I have. That's going to be three d tens. Top draw. Uh, so. Uh, the highest I got was a five. I rolled two twos and a five. Do oh, I have any recourse to try and improve that? No, the three dice was you trying to improve it. Um, don't worry, don't worry, it's fun. You'll like it. Um, <laughs> so, uh, the way that stress works in this game, um, you have five stress tracks. You have blood, mind, supplies, fortune, and echo. Um, 
they uh, they're all self-explanatory aside from fortune, which is bad luck or enemies moving against you, and echo, which is the heart changing you in some wibbly way. Um, I don't know if you have any inbuilt protections against those. You might have some. Let's have, let's have a look at your class. Let's have a look at your sheet, shall we? Because uh, I have blood. a protection against blood. It looks like top draw. Then then I'll then I'll hit you in blood. So Beautiful. whatever I tell you, take one less. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um. You, you got like a big old rifle, right? Is, is, is that the deal? Cool. Uh, I'm going to say that you're that you've appeared a little bit closer than you would have liked, and so it's quite hard to get the rifle around in these in these close quarters. Um. What I'm going to do. Yeah, we'll call it. We'll call it D eight. You're fine, mate. You're fine. I rolled a one on a D8, and you have, you have, you have soak minus one. <laughs> um, so um, rather than describing some cool thing happening where I where I, I get to use any of my powers, um, quick as a flash, that that prosthetic arm made out of bird bones um, lunges up, grabs the end of your rifle barrel, and spins it away from her. Um, and sh and she's strong, or like rather, this arm is strong. Or there's some there's some there's some magic going on with it. Something something not 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 strictly by the numbers. Um, the shot um, ricochets um, off the off the stone uh, off the concrete floor directly next to where Ed's character is. Um, and I think we should cut back to the other group. In fact, actually, have a, have a quick look. We've got six minutes left. Can someone donate to the campaign so we can all go for a pee? <laughs> <laughs> if awesome. anyone, if anyone's waiting on it, because I need to go for a wee. I've been running for two hours now. If we, if we can, like, if we can get that back up, we can get that back up to ten minutes. <laughs> then we've all have time to go because I, I, I don't want to try and do it in six. <laughs> That's risky. Absolutely not. Into your first ladder. Sorry. <laughs> Go I'm on, not gonna play my pants on the stream. I'm not gonna. I'll just like. I'll just. Leave. I'm not gonna. I said I'd dance for you. I'm not gonna urinate for you. Yeah, that's a lot <laughs> more money. You're gonna have to make a major pledge for that. I'm joking. I will say, like, we have, we have. We have. Yeah, we we do not. We mm, full disclosure. We do not offer a piss tier. No. <laughs> around the uh, there's, there's a lot of things I'll do, but that's 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 not one of them. Um, well, I, I, we're just going to vamp for five minutes then until someone donates again, and then we're going to go on break. <laughs> we nope. will return for more game after we uh, have um, our break. Well, I, 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 we, we've got five minutes left. Mm -hmm. there, there, thank you, whoever that was. Right, we'll be back <laughs> in five. Be Lots right of love. <laughs> we're good.
everyone, we are back. Thank you for the bathroom break. That was very kind of you. It may take a moment for uh, me to get the counter reset for the aforementioned reasons of technical fuckery. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead. First off, okay, actually, before I hand this back to Greg. Yeah, we'll do some blurb. Do some blurb. I want to thank, plenty of time. Yeah, we want to thank you all. Uh, this has mm. already been. Oh my god, I, I was able to click the counter. This is amazing. Okay. Um, <laughs> We have already uh, been having a great time. Uh, we really appreciate everything that you are all doing, and the community's awesome. We're, the chat's been hilarious. Praise Clock. Thank you for the bathroom break. Thank you for the re-up when we got back. You're very, very kind and benevolent gods. Uh, and um, I hope you've been hearing and enjoying the music. Chat said you could hear it. That's great. That's our heart playlist. You can find it on our YouTube. Um, and, you know, the normal stuff. Thanks to Sarah uh, Cousins for the great art. Thanks to Gareth Ryder Hanrahan for uh, the writing on the Dagger and the Heart. And thanks to Grant for running this chaotic one shot. Um, that, I, think, I think your subtitles got a bit fucky, CJ. Oh, great. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Bye. How? <laughs> I, 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 but like it, it got halfway through and then it just decided to go and and con con and and con con and 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 so i don't know yeah. that was just the demons it's okay guys right. um it looks like it's fixed i've clicked on it again i uh, i can't really say for sure music's too loud music's says too loud. says um i don't know I'm, I'm, the, the canary in the call right no i appreciate that uh, because to be fully honest with you the way I've done the audio, I can't hear the music, so I'm relying on you all. Um, <laughs> I've bumped it back down uh, to where it was before. Uh, Y'all in chat, let me know how that's going and how you feel and if it's good. And with that, I'm going to pass this back over to Grant, who can how either start again or vamp, whatever you feel like doing. Yeah, sure. How many people we got in chat at the moment? Um, we're at 80. Uh, that's, 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 actually, that's actually more than I wanted. We were at 90 <laughs> earlier, and I'm not sure that helps. Oh, anything. cool. As, as, as long as it's a downwards trend, <laughs> and I get to sleep at some point. Yeah, yeah, right. don't worry, it's a downwards trend. All right. and... As long as that person who wanted me to wet myself on camera leaves. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> someone said, too bad, this is how you die. Great, thank you guys. Um, uh, I will physically edit my own um, mic to bring it back up a little bit more, so let me, don't leave, guys. Don't know. No, it's okay. It's fine. We've got enough money. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> hey, it's Good Friday. Go have dinner with your mum. Hey, it's fine. <laughs> I do this, this fun show. It'll only last like 30 minutes. I mean, yeah, it's only going to last like 30 minutes. It'll be fine. 30 minutes, how, says Grant. Uh, says Grant. Someone, someone in chat says, How many people did you think there would be, Grant? 25. 25. <laughs> 25. I think, I think it might. I think. I. I think like it might have. That's yeah, like, like adorably conservative. Well, I don't, we don't have a big audience. Like in in terms of streaming, we don't have a big audience. So I kind of didn't quite clock how popular everyone was because I don't watch actual plays. Right. Like like I just I just know <laughs> I can tell from the way that you put the emphasis there on plays. Actual like, plays. Um, I, I will just, say. Sorry, I, how should I? I've it got should a... be actual plays. Actual place. Oh, I, I've got. I've got to sense to check this just a little bit. We <laughs> had mm. at least this many folks on our launch stream as well. Mm. So you know, it's just a thing people are excited about. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and I, I, I suppose like I, I figured they'd turn up at the start because they're backed and they saw it and like, oh, people! I, 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 I like seeing people and hearing their voices. I'll watch the stream. But then I realised that I think this is this is a sort of what's the word? Masochism implies I enjoy it, but there's there's there's, there's kind of a masochism inherent here that, that, that people are interested to come and watch. Sadism, that's it. Sadism from the audience. Yeah. Anyway, no, it's all good stuff. Thank you so much for all the money that comes through. I will say, as I as I mentioned earlier, n no matter how high the pledge goes, it doesn't really affect how much money we have. But it means that we can carry on making books for longer. And one of the things which I tried to, which I've really tried to do in, in setting up our own Rick and Deckard, we've been running for seven, eight years now. Um, recently we have expanded. And so we've bought on CJ and Elaine and a bunch of other people. Um, and our goal, uh, our, when we set up our own Rick and Deckard, our goal was to, for me and Chris, to write books. And that has shifted somewhat. Although I still get to write books for a living, which is wonderful. It's now about um, trying to m build an enterprise where creative people can 
make things and have a nice time together at work and not do jobs that they fucking hate and not starve to death. And, and, we're, and we're getting there. And that is thanks to contributions from people like you watching. Whether you do it out of spite, whether you do it out of a out of a desire to watch me just wet myself on camera, which I think Twitch are against. There's a lot of stuff you can do on Twitch, but I don't think I think that. Mm. Although I guess it's not on camera, so yeah, you uh, could do it, and you just don't show it. Yeah, okay. In which case, yeah, but it's oh, the oh, that you're doing. Oh, oh no, I weed myself. You can hey, do uh, anything on somebody Twitch said once. somebody oh, said chat. they'd up their uh, donation if that happened. I think there you go. Oh chat! Oh chat! I made a mistake in my name. Damn. I Jesus think I'm Christ, a Grant. couple of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's gone back down again. Never mind. Someone just bit. Someone just. <laughs> oh, the depths of depravity we have reached. <laughs> oh, oh. Um, and right. just so you know, uh, we. <laughs> Sorry As if on way. cue, we were backed again. So thank yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Thank you. Yeah, it's great. It's great. No, I'm, no, I'm just, I'm just going to sit in it. Um, until the next you break. You people I... have the power to clip things on Twitch, right? <laughs> that is fine. <laughs> fine. This is going to live forever on the internet. Fine. It's like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm fine. It's okay. Everyone oh, knows. You... <laughs> it's a, I, I did it in a funny voice. <laughs> I'm, I'm bulletproof. It's fine. Back to the game. Let's play a game. <laughs> yeah, let's play a game. Let's stop. Let's stop. Stop this. Stop talking about we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and <clears throat> we're back in the heart. When last we met our heroes, um, y uh, Lady had grabbed her rifle. Sorry, Ventrix had grabbed her rifle and spun her away uh, in the shot. Rang uh, the shot went wide, smashed into the flagstone, spooking the rat man. Um, or perhaps, oh, you know what? Maybe, uh, how do you react to, to a gunshot going off, rat man? As the stone underneath me just chips away, and there's just the ding, and Piper isn't registering any of this, he is just slowly beginning to rise up on his crutches, and as he does so, the cloak just shrugs off his shoulders, revealing this just blue paint stained skeletal, just barely any flesh on there, just like skin and bone. And he is slowly rising to his full height and just cocking his head to one side as he looks directly at Ventrix Alabaster. Tremendous. Let's cut back to the other group. So oh, I hope those kids are all right, you know, they seem like a good wee lot, you know? <laughs> We're the normal ones, and there's like nightmare rat skeletons. We've got like gnolls with a million ghosts in it, and a witch that wants everyone to be consumed by the heart. And we're down here, like, let's go fix a train. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a druggie and a mom. Yeah. What if we fixed a Name train a and saved everyone? Joe. A, 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 a drug user and a train mother can be a family. Yeah. 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 We're like a cop, cop duo without being cops at all. Well, uh, yeah. Well, you are. You are kind, of, kind, kind of a cop. Of, yeah. Mm. I don't know. You kind of. Yeah. It's it's a bit sticky. Yeah. And I think like if if I was rewriting Heart, I might put even less cop on the house. <laughs> but um, for the time being, it's I'm okay. It. I am a little bit of a bastard, shall we? Mm. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yes, you are. Um, you walk down onto this lobby, there are ghosts on either side of you. Again, they have this big uh, rent open in every one of their chests, these ragged scars and these holes. Um, and they uh, they are they are coming towards you. And I'm thinking less like ooh, ghosts and more like sort of like grudge ring, sort of like Oh no. Korean zombie ghosts. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, unfortunately, it's the Korean zombie ghosts uh, as as they come towards you, um, and they are they are trying they're trying to speak. Did, I mean, I sorry, very good. Uh, <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> no, thank you. I sorry. I'd really, I genuinely would love to hear you out here, but we're a little bit busy and. Is there any way we can, like, is there any doorways we can kick through to get away from here? Oh, like you, can barge in into, you can barge into their apartments. Um, and also, they're, they're, they're immaterial. So you can run through them, but it's going to feel weird. Oh. Um, 
Uh, you can so like they we're following standard ghost rules. Mm -hmm. You can run through them unless they manifest. I don't know whether or not they, 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 these guys don't seem very manifesty, but they are hungry and they do mm -hmm. eat people. Mm. Um, the idea being, like, I figure it's more of, uh, in fact, you, you know, you've both worked here, you both know how this all works. Occasionally, if you don't have the proper protections, if you go down too deep into the into the tower box, the ghosts get you, and um, they suck all the life out of you, um, leaving you sort of desiccated and empty, but without one of those big uh, rents in the chest. Okay. I think in this case, then, um, I might turn to... Uh... Uh, Gethin, and just be like, "All right, stick behind me," um, and then like square her shoulders, and I could activate my etheric field ability. Um, Hell yeah! Which is like, uh, yeah, that's like, how it works. Squares her shoulders, um, and then like quickly like adjusting some valves, some you know uh, like little levers here and there. The plate seems to heat up, and then static starts to to build up in between the plates. And it's this um, unnatural etheric like discharge starts to arc between her and um, like the walls and whatnot, um, which uh, yeah gives a degree of protection from unnatural entities and whatnot. A significant protection. I also believe yeah. that you've got it rigged so it hurts ghosts when you turn it on, right? Uh, well, yes, it deals three stress um, to uh, to every enemy. You, in the thing, yeah. So. Well, it's uh, they, these definitely count as enemies. Um, um, so yeah, I'll do that, and like this pulse of etheric like energy crackles out, and then she'll she'll just start barreling down the corridor, yeah, yeah, yeah. in hand, just sort of trying yeah. to shoulder through to clear there's, a path. The, there's the as... the initial sort of the goes out, um, and all the ghosts, uh, like. Some of them, uh, are like uh, you know, you know how you used to get those. Um, you'd be on a holiday and you'd get these little wooden toys, and they'd be sort of strung up with elastic. And you'd push the mm. button in, and the toy would go like, like that, and it would stand back up. And you could sort of animate them a bit by poking the thing at the bottom. It's like that. The ghosts just sort of like crumple in, like in a way that the joints, joints. Uh, uh, it crumples like a 3D model almost. It sort of <laughs> crawls like uh, they are they are mashed up against the wall. It seems we it seems they can go through the wall when they want to, but now they're mashed up against it. Um, and you barge down the corridor. Uh, give me a some sort of run through ghost check. <laughs> what would that be? Desolate. Um, and. What, what, what Can I get technology on this, maybe, for using my technology? Yeah, sounds good. Love it. Yeah, rock and roll. <laughs> um, uh, probably a vate, I imagine. Or huh? yeah, this 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 will be a vate or hunt or okay. No, well, let's listen for everyone here. It's up to you to convince me to let me use to, to let you use your skills and domain. So tell me why, and we'll roll lots of dice. Yeah, well, I think genuinely she's just re she's trying to rely on her armor here to protect her. She's not got a huge amount of time. Mm. She's not necessarily focusing. She just wants to get all these people out. So there's less, you know, big thinking on all this. She's just barreling down here, which is probably maybe not the best thing because the highest I rolled there was a five. Um, no, that's, so, okay, that's okay. Um, you're gonna take yeah. some. You're gonna take, take some stress. stress. That's, it's just uh, we'll call it we'll call it D six echo. Uh, that's six. Roll? But you have that, don't you? Uh, yeah, I, so I have three alcohol protection, which is good, but three will get through, so she's going to get a bit a bit fucked up in the process. Not all of these yeah, ghosts okay. are repelled, I assume. <laughs> no, not all these ghosts are repelled. Um, don't worry, you can clear out that threat because you just took fall. Oh, you can clear out the uh, stress you just took fallout. Ooh, rock and roll. Uh, let me just let me look at what ah, fallout is. Wait, is ghosts. this the first fallout? The first fallout happened here while Let's you were charging go. through ghosts. But like it's it's an echo for what we got here. We got minor minor echo. Bubos. Oh, okay, yeah, I like this. Uh, you notice minor elements of deja vu. You notice minor elements of your past, a life appearing in the heart as though it is reading your mind and adapting itself to your expectations. The GM tells you what happens. The GM tells you what happens is a pretty Pretty weak source thing to write in a fucking book, isn't it? <laughs> mm. um, 
the GM, me, will tell you what happens now, which is um, as you, uh, yeah, okay, uh, as as you're barging through these ghosts, um, you can see the faces of those people who you lost, who you've referenced before. Um, they are there too. Um, I am the train that killed the people I love for a brief moment. Mm, mm. Inter intergenerational trauma, but with trains. Mm. Interrail trauma. Intergenerational. Mm, no. Right, no, no, we can get there. Let's brainstorm this. They're paying for it. Intergenerational train ma. Uh, that, 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 was, that was my first port of call. But I, mm. I think it works. She gets like, I think in this case, she'd probably get like, if this is a long corridor choked with ghosts, she'd get about three quarters of the way through before this hits. And then it's just like the trauma flashbacks and she stumbles, grinds to yeah, a halt. Yeah. The etheric field flickers out. And, oh, uh, you know, it's it's uh, too much. And she's frozen in place. Do something, guys. She just starts muttering, I'm sorry. Yeah, as I'm sorry. He notices, I didn't mean to. As oh, Gethin no, notices no. that this is happening, um, he kind of, as she gears to a complete stop, he puts his hand uh, on her back and it, it kind of tries to, for a moment, figure out what's going on. And he realizes she's not there right now. She's somewhere else. Shit. And uh, he's going to, she's too big. She's too strong for him to physically move. So instead of trying to put her behind him, he is going to step around uh, to the remaining ghosts uh and he's going to kind of grab onto that badge again like um like they do frequently um as a sort of habit or a courage and he looks at the remaining ghosts and he's like you need to go you need to go now and i'm going to use stare down hopefully neat on so the that remaining is, ghosts that is well, you tell me what skills it is. Yep, so I would think domains. that... It's, so while it's a kill d6, um, I would almost feel like Hunt would be valid here as well, um, maybe. Sure. Because it's it's sort of... Um, realistically, the way that stare down works, you're not actually killing them with a the look. If no, they are spooking. capacitated to zero, then they like surrender. Uh, so I'm going to use Hunt. Have you and, got point blank as well? Um, do I have point Nose to nose. Mm -hmm. Nose yeah. to nose. Yes. Quick I think so. Yeah. You're D8 up close. Yep. Basically. Uh, and cool. I would like to use my haven domain because I'm in my haven. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. This is the haven. Yep. It, I mean, it's, it's where they live. Yep. Well, yeah. I now, mean. Now, now I, 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 take notes, everyone. CJ has played Heart before. Uh, <laughs> and CJ knows how loose I am as a GM. So if you want to roll lots of dice, it's all about just, get, just telling me that, that you have to do it. Just three dice. Let's go. Yeah, let's do this. Got all my bone dice. They're not actually bone. They just look like bones. Okay, my highest roll. Ooh, is a nine. Fantastic. Yes. Cool. D eight stress, please. Okay. Um. Ten. Is it? That's oh, a D, that's a D10. Wait, yeah. Oh, oh, God. <laughs> it's, it's, like, I, I don't know how good you are at role playing games, but it's really hard to get 10 on a D8. You're right. I thought there was a rule we were all like, missing there, and I was 10? like, oh, God. Yeah, no, I literally just picked Wait, up the dice that I had sitting there and rolled it without thinking. I think you could help. D8. Here we go. Let's do that one. Well, that's better. That's a seven. Great. Cool. Um, that's, that's, that's more than enough. To uh, to scatter these ghosts. Out. So is it is it is it fear? Is it compliance? Is it is it like? Um, I really like the idea of of, of like of, of all the hounds manifesting behind. In fact, yeah, yeah, we'll go for that. Um, as you as you step forward, you're. I, I kind of like the idea that Gethin's not quite a believer. Yeah, I. Like... It's sort of um, uh, reluctantly, uh, mm. kind of became a part of this just feeling that this is what i should do uh this is this is this is what i've got i'm down here i'm stuck down here doing shit anyway and uh at least i can make sure some other people stay safe so cool. uh and there's there's not he's not super religious he's not super anything really uh he's just doing a thing to do a thing but you, he's you... kind of like still mm. he's still got that mm. like uh, sort of, of fixation. Silver. Well, heart, yeah, but also fixation with that 
badge. It means more to him than he's really introspected about, I think. Okay, cool. Um, you you tell the ghosts they have to leave. Um, well, they have to, have to get out of here. Um, and then you, you notice that the ghosts are looking behind you. Um, and you can't see this, uh, but Elaine, you can through the through the flicker. Sorry, Kin, you can through the flickering of your etheric field of the, of, of the feedback um, of I'm going to say about twelve to fifteen people who wore the badge before that same badge, um, and all of them. And like, and the, the only thing you can feel, CJ, is like it gets slightly cold on your mm-hmm. shoulder, um, and one of them comes forward and leans on your shoulder and everyone else lines up behind him and they've all got that same sort of like you can't stay here this isn't safe uh look uh and the ghosts the ghosts look directly past you at them um and like it's like they've dropped what's going on they're quite, they, they are like like they're scared too um so it turns out you speak ghost which is nice um wild uh, which I'm going to call, I'm going to treat that as a I'm just going to knock some off the delve, hang on Oh, cool, yeah. thank you That's alright uh, Brings us down to three, yeah, okay, cool So, that, clear, that, that clears a route through to the next uh, through to the next stairwell down um, I, 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 How long does it take you to get back to your senses alone? I think um you know, she was doing this. She was she was barreling through. Her her main motivation is to protect the people around her. So there'll be this after you know, um, eh, getting like steps in front and everything. There's that moment of I I shouldn't be behind. I should be in front. I should be protecting and everything. And then that sort of she kind of you know shakes her head out of it as the etheric field dies down and this like power cell because it's a one use thing um this power cell sort of ejects and like clangs down onto the ground in this hollow place as the ghosts dissipate and that's like the thing that sort of like snaps her out Ooh, sorry i was away with the fairies there for a minute you were you all good he he's, turns as soon as the ghosts have started to dissipate they turn around uh because they're worried and does the oh like it's like you're good hi Hi, sorry. That bacon's coming back on us. We should uh, we should keep going before they uh, before they come back. Yeah, let's go. Cool. You carried the team there, and yeah. kind of slaps her on the shoulder and uh, and tries to kind of. Clank. Clank. <laughs> yeah. Clank. Uh, and the, the pair the the pair of you um, lump down the stairs. Uh, towards the basement, uh, towards the base of the building. I uh, just let you know you are, you are over halfway through the delve now. That was a effective round. Nice. Um, actually, no, because like, you, you did a bunch of stress as well. We'll just we'll just say you're through the delve and you will come, we'll come back to you. Oh, nice, excellent. Yeah, I think that um, I, I think that in that moment, uh, without actually saying it, Gethin's trying to be just stand just a little closer to him, just kind of. Mm be a bolstering figure and is Ooh. reflecting on what he saw out of the corner of his eye which is the other hounds i really like the idea that ken is like knackered by this and so like starts mm-hmm. putting weight on you and you can't <laughs> and you just <laughs> you're quite you're quite a small guy yeah okay yeah, um especially like, in yeah, comparison the field. to her we come back to our gunfight in the church um, wow. To set the scene, Ventrix Alabaster has grabbed the end of the rifle, um, and if if she'd rolled higher, probably would have tried to bend it in half, but didn't. So just holds holds that off to the side, uh, and stares you dead in the eyes, and not your mask's eyes, your other eyes, which aren't quite like it's weird that she's managing to look you in the eyes, but she's pulling <laughs> it off. Basically, um, we have the we have uh, the. Died Piper pulled up to his orb, his full horrible height behind us. Um, and you are, are you standing by the door, sort of like, um, I, I, I get the impression, then that you're sort of waiting for it to go slightly wronger so you can you can really hurt people. I'm waiting for her to make a move on my sister, otherwise, she right? Is right, okay, entirely cool. the Pipers, right? Cool. Um, she uh, she looks you dead in the eye. Uh, where are they? She says. <laughs> I've kept these people from the dark for 30 long years. 
I've ousted cults. I've kept these fragile few safe from hungry specters. And now, on the day when it's all falling down, you would come here and try to do me harm. You would try to keep their souls from heaven. How dare you, you wretch? She says. Um, on you go. Anyone connect? You, you stab her. She said a thing there. You can stab her. Yeah, I said. You ask, how dare I? Let me show you. Uh, and I would like to. Is there like something magical that I can do to just summon the power of the spirits and rend her soul from her body? Well, you can make an attack, and we can say that you're rending her soul from her body. <laughs> like, I, I, that. Have you got you got like a weapon, right? I, let's have a look. Yeah, I got a gun. I got a blade. Right. Um, uh, what you got here? I you got, got a got silver that. moon amulet as oh, well. That's neat. Now you can trade. I that. also have abilities. Uh, yeah, uh, you, you can heal people. Um, yeah, you can. When, when you get advance, you heal. Um, you can bolster an ally to give them plus one mind protection, which is nice by giving them a bit of a hug. Mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> and ah, here you are. You can speak the secret name of the goddess as a weapon. Um, which means that you can like, you speak the name of the goddess and it goes off like a shotgun, um, but a very quiet shotgun. I will say that's more of a group target, and you probably don't want to kill everyone in the church. <laughs> Um, right. So uh, broadly, um, you can you can describe the attack however you like. We'll use the Seeker's Blade um, stat line. So you do D6, and because it's brutal, you roll two dice and pick the higher to apply stress okay. to her. Okay, cool. Then I'm going to uh, she ho she's holding on to my weapon uh, to my gun. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, I'm going to grab. Um, I'm going to say out of the end of the butt of the gun. Pull out this long hooked blade uh, oh, that yeah. was clearly designed to make. Ah, I tricked tonight. you with my gun. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, I pull that out. It's clearly yeah. designed to cause it. First of all, not only to stab, but also to cause wounds that will not close properly. Mm -hmm. uh, and once again, the eyes fully glowing, and now the murmurs of the spirits. Uh, I think. I think I'm trying to bring her down to the void with me as I slash down towards her heart. Uh, so I roll two d6. Yeah, um, no, it's uh, it's it's d10 to hit. So d10 it'll be hit. it'll be kill plus religion. All right, come on, kill and religion. Come on. Okay. So one. That's two. Yeah, three dice. <gasps> that's a five. My lord, I've I rolled six dice uh, on this exact move and gotten a five. As the highest both times. Top draw. Let's yeah, you love to see it. Stress. You love to see it. Okay. Hang on. Uh, you got mark five blood stress. Oh, wow. As. Okay. Oh. So, Is that minus so, one? Is that already with the minus one? Oh, it's with the minus one, yeah. Okay. Um, with the... Uh, uh, you... You you, t you you take a swinger. Absolutely fine. Um, and it lodges in her shoulder. It's, 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 it's like it's like a, it's, you said it was like a hook, right? So it's like to rip and tear. So is that the deal? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Larger than. Oh. <laughs> ah. Sweet technical difficulties. You disconnected yourself <laughs> from the spirits. Larger in her shoulder, um, and uh, and and it's 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 like it's caught on a pipe or something. This woman is fucking indomitable. Um, She's yoked. <laughs> He's hench as fuck, bro. Um, I'll say, as this is happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, can I describe the attack? Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, yes, I, yes. I, 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 otherwise, I just gave him some stress and we can't work out why. Um, <laughs> I'm just feeling really insecure. Yeah, no, yeah. I get it, man. I get it. <laughs> okay, cool. He's so um, yoked. I keep saying cool things and trying to kill this woman, and nothing works. <laughs> The right, you, you appeared beautifully. Um, you uh, uh, she she casts your rifle aside, it platters to the ground. Ah, uh, inside, we'll have it inside because it seems rude to throw it off a building, but not you. Uh, she she uh, she gestures forward at you with the with this hand. Um, you uh, and you, you, it's like you're falling off a building. Best way I can describe it. She she has she she has telekinesis in as much as it's like you're falling off a building, out of a cool crow hand. 
Um, and only through a force of will do you manage to grab on to the and I suppose force of hands, grab on to the to the edge of the balcony as she as she gestures at you like that. And like and it's it's like it's like your yeah, uh, it's like it's like gravity's been reversed. Or like gravity's been turned around ninety degrees. So you're sort of dangling off. Uh and she 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 uh, she she starts walking towards you. You will not ruin this sacred place on its most important day. Now, uh Ed. So I say as this has been happening, almost sort of casually through the chaos, mm -hmm. just barefooted, long toenails just click clacking on the stone beneath. This skeletal figure just walking forwards, still streaked in blue paint, just reaches forward a gnarled fingered hand and just rests it very, very gently upon the shoulder of the high priestess. Cool. As you're yep. as as you're there, um, there's all sorts of like bits and like feathers and coins and prayer books and prayer flags are starting to get sucked into the gravity that, she, that, that she's pushing down. So it's like you're not, you're stuck still. Go ahead. So, I have an ability called Kiss of the Drowned Queen. Oh yeah, this is fun. Oh, How do I do that? It says kill D six. Yeah, uh, so that will be a kill plus a cult, and you roll a dot. You, you, so if you have kill and you have and you have a cult, mm -hmm. then you roll those dice, and mm -hmm. then it does d6, and it does from drowning. Okay. Um, if your target is at least sh shin deep in water, it inflicts d8 damage. But unfortunately, she's quite far away from water. But it would be good to drown her in that fountain, wouldn't it? That would be really good. That would be great. Uh, I'm, I'm, mm, we'll see. Okay, I will roll. I rolled a ten. Oh, well, I mean, oh. Yeah. top draws. Uh, so that's that's d six plus one. Okay, so... and it bypasses all protections that she has. So that's a six. Oh. Mm. Oh. All right, all right. Um, uh, yeah, it's killer. Tell me how she dies. Oh. So, nice. sort of just slowly bringing her round to face me. Gently, almost as one would a child, reaching behind his back, just pulls forward this distended, warped, swollen, basically piece of meat. At first, it's quite hard to discern what it is, but the more you look at it, the more you realize it is a drowned crow, six years old. White, that was the smell! <laughs> white feathers just poking <laughs> off it. And slowly, he just begins to push the High Priestess down, down, down onto her knees. And he just brings the crow forward and pushes it into her mouth slowly. Whoa. You just hear a... <laughs> As her jaw just comes undone, and he's just pushing it down, and she feels from the depths of her stomach salt water just rising and rising and rising until it is gushing out of her mouth, out of every orifice, just pouring out, and every bending orifice? Them. Every orifice. Okay. Run, as the <laughs> piper just bends down and whispers in her ear. Eat crow, and just oh! pushes her off the edge of the building before reaching down yeah, to Warabi. Oh, delightful. Uh, yeah. Um, what during during the well done, well done, beautiful, beautiful round of applause, please, chat. Um, the uh, I don't know what's I I get yeah yeah what clap at home motherfuckers. <laughs> chat's, the, uh, chat's going yeah. mad actually. Yeah, well done. Loving cool. it. Yeah. Rightly fucking so. Um, My God. During the drowning process, I, I like to imagine that the the the, the rogue gravity stopped, uh, and so yeah, um, Warabe is able to scramble back up. But he's certainly no longer being flung off the side of the building anymore. Um, she she tumbles down uh, this the uh, dirty salt water and those and and those white feathers from her cloak spiraling around, um, and then. With a with an almighty crunch that you can hear from upstairs. In fact, actually, uh, as as the two of you 
leave this building. Um, As she falls, can I draw her soul out of that and and add it to my collection? Like, so that sounds can good. I sort of reach into that this pool that she is oh, drowning yeah, in. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like like, like, like you watched floor. her die with yeah. the drowning bit. So yeah, you can you can definitely have that. Yeah. Um, as as uh, in fact, yeah, as the two of you um, come out, so you're from you were leaving from a different building, I believe, like across the square, uh, and you see the you see the quite recognizable body of Ventrix Alabaster smash into the ground um, with a with an almighty crunch. Um, Warabe, you feel that this this soul is this soul is different. This soul has absorbed an awful lot of power over the course of its time here. Not only has she been trafficking with ghosts, um, but she has she's been taking a taking a cut off the top of the sacrifices, as it were. So she is, let's say, I don't know, if I was to use any specific language, swollen with strange magics. Ooh. Um like moon grade magics, if that's a thing you needed. Um, yeah, that will be like you'll need to you'll need to sort of rummage around and find a way to make it happen. Uh, but you've got you you're, you're over half of the way there, which mm. is nice. Um, the uh, your sister comes back in, Lind. I'm oh, sorry, Lind. You, you're about to say something. What were you going to say? I was going to say, having sort of seen the Piper get his vengeance, having seen um, Rabe absorbing these souls. And I'm guessing, looking around and seeing the very frightened faces of so many cultists. Oh my god! Yeah, everyone like, 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 like they're, they're stunned. It was like Perfect. it was it was such a violent death. Incredible, to completely overwhelm them in a compelling sense. This is going to be the point that Vind, uh, that Lind um, shifts into her true form. The blood beneath her skin appears to boil. Veins begin to pop. They are almost pustules, but they bubble and burst. And suddenly the skin all over this fragile and tiny little body bursts open, splits, splinters and cracks. Uh, there is a sort of sex, a sort of a moment where you see her eyes begin to divide and then divide again with this horrible squishing and squelching sound and they keep dividing out and out into smaller and smaller beads and they begin to migrate over this bloody mess that her entire body has become and every single segment of herself her jaw her teeth her nose her, her hands her arms it's all getting smaller all fragmenting into tiny bodies, littler, smaller bodies, the bodies of rats begin to form. And this this once tiny creature doubles, trebles, tri like becomes enormous in size as if a swarm of rats has overtaken her and Christed out <laughs> in all dimensions. The beady little eyes of each of them formed from her own and this rat queen stands above all and very much galadriel in that section of lord of the rings goes do not be afraid everyone is instantly afraid <laughs> do not be too afraid <laughs> heart my darlings is burning it is dying and you must flee do not throw yourselves from the edge Find solace with me. Come, right. leave. Right, leave Lind. this place and run. Lind, top draw. Wonderful stuff. Um, you inflict D4 stress on all adversaries who can see you. Oh, yeah. Um, but I, but yeah. Probably, like, these guys aren't necessarily adversaries, but they, they don't know who you are. No, that's absolutely... Um, yeah. <laughs> so, give me a D4, and this is, and this is like... Rogue etheric energies and also fear. Okay, two, two. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, a couple of uh, a couple of them. Um... Can it be that sort of like the pain that you feel before an enlightenment? 
they something they would maybe recognize as uh, something deep in their soul where they're like, oh, everything is wrong. <laughs> oh, like, yeah, sure, sure. No, like, I mean, like, you haven't rolled yet, is the thing. So, ah, um, so every cool. time, so when you shift <laughs> into your true form, uh, you gain, uh, you gain mastery on hunt and kill, and everything else becomes more difficult. Oh shit! Fuck right. Um, yes. Okay, how, cool. However, you're fine. You do have a thing. This is one situation when an action you perform in your true form would be risky. Mm. Treat it as standard instead. So union. Okay. You get to you get to do the thing. Uh, okay. Yeah. So this will be compel plus re- cult or curse, okay. whichever one you want. Okay. She's doing her best. Uh, compel plus oh, yeah. that's three cult. Dice. So that's three dice. I'll take it. Is it possible for us to help support this role in any way? Yes, absolutely. Uh, um, can I like? You, yeah, I'd like to reach uh, spiritually, reach out, grab the bloated form of uh, Ventrix's soul, and oh, yeah. what you always do with an overstuffed, wet rag, you squeeze and twist. Uh, and I'd like to start squeezing and twisting some of this ma- uh, this magic out of the body, this mood magic, and using it and like redirecting it towards uh, Lind to give her, in addition to her rat queen authority, also just like some of the essence of the authority uh, that Ventrix had over these sure. people sure. as she's Love trying it. to influence them. The way, the, uh, the way the assisting helps is if you have a relevant, a relevant? Which is a relevant elevant? If you have a relevant <laughs> oh, skill or... a I have a pet <laughs> relevant. <laughs> if you have a relevant, if, you, if yeah. you have a relevant skill or domain, uh, you can you can lend your support. Uh, so you've got religion, so that works here, um, okay. and that means just as a dice. But if it goes wrong, you also get hurt. Okay. Well, the I'm... top dice I've rolled so far is eight. Oop. I'm also going to assist. Yeah. How well. are you going to assist? Oh, uh, okay. Just looking at all of the souls around, mm-hmm. looking at her, and seeing these many souls as one in their mm. fear tales all connecting in the epicenter of where lind stands the piper is just going to kneel and bow delightful okay. all right Jeff, an extra two dice you did get an eight so it's all it's all fine but is it yep. great uh so it was a five and a one on those two extra dice so i'll take mm-hmm. the eight if that's okay. great work yeah <laughs> um y- yeah you know what you managed to bring people on side um or if not on side you managed to paralyze them into obedience uh we'll which go, counts we'll go with that one <laughs> yeah which, which which counts like i'm i'm gonna say maybe like before before you got a chance to say your thing uh, between four and five of them jumped off Okay. Um, well, we just like d- just as 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 you turned up, drowned their mother on dry land souls? with a crow. <laughs> Sorry, can I just snag their souls real quick? As I'm like squeezing, as I'm squeezing, can I just be like, oh, excuse me. Um, you know what? Um, I think I think it's from. No, actually, no. You know what? No, and I'll tell you why. Um, because these guys didn't die up here. They die when they hit the ground, and. You you can reach out for the souls, but they are immediately like you, you immediately these hungry ghosts start to start start tearing away at them and dragging them back inside. Um, so they start they start to look, sort of like like fritter away. If like if you you could probably fight the ghosts off to get them, or you could you know talk to them or what have you. But right now they're too far away and they're being eaten. Um with all of it sort of ha- oh she feels kind of bad almost seeing that where is like trying to grab these souls but have just sort of escaped his grasp um she's going to just direct everyone out of the church again in this massive form um keeping the doors open whatever it may be and her hulking figure is going to lock every set of eyes that it has on eon aeon forgotten her name I, oh dear i think originally it was ianid 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 we'll, we'll Eonid. go with ianid yeah Eonid. Yeah. it's Eonid. been a long time since we've seen each other ianid ianid is really struggling with this uh, or, already it's been a big day um well you got to speak to her very gradually as everyone is sort of beginning to leave she will shrink back down uh all parts of the rats again sort of conjoining and congealing in it's not pretty 
there's no like oh everything just goes back to normal it you hear the squeals and squelch of each rat as it sort of clicks back into place and cra and the the tail that formed this this massive clump of tail at her the center of her being her heart beating uh sort of respreads out into her body produces the most sickening noise nice. but eventually she's reduced back down to this waif this nasty dirty little thing and she takes a big deep breath and locks eyes with the Enid again. Sister, we have both much been changed. What the fuck is yeah, yeah, that's that's one reaction for sure. Um, <clears throat> do you remember when I was younger, sicker? Yes. We would have been about twelve. Uh, yes, I remember. Oh, sorry, I forgot we're posh, aren't we? Yes, I remember. <laughs> in the, in the gardens, romping amongst the spinnies. Yes, you were wearing your best pinafores and yes, the, the yes. good the good bloomers. Um, I we had on our we had on our Sunday masks. Oh, what what wasn't it a romping good time? Tell oh, you know. yeah. yes, My lashings word. of ginger ale and employees. Like, like, Lynn's mouth isn't fitting around these words as they used to. She's really struggling trying to find all of these fineries. I, like, I, I like to imagine this still like, 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 a, like you suck up a loose tail like spaghetti. Oh yeah, <laughs> one's going up the nose. Things are going uh, in the ears. Like, it's all uh, still knitting together again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, um, cool. When I, when mother and father realized I wasn't going to get better. Hmm. Hmm. I remember. They took me to the witches. Mm. This is what I am now. And I'm sorry, but I'm not. We will discuss this later, but for now, you must follow us and leave. Please. I, I've, right. I've come That's a the, very long way to find you. There's nothing left for here, here for me anymore. Um, and she and she she goes to, to to grab some of the effects from around. Like it seems like they, no one had. There was a lot of communal um, ownership of items here, uh, and then uh, she starts grabbing stuff and putting it in her bag. It's, it, like she, I think like she slept in a bunk or something. That sort of thing. Um, she starts grabbing uh, prayer books, handfuls of feathers, stuff which has no impact on her life now that she's left the cult, but still out of a force of habit. She starts getting it, uh, like a, a, a an albino crow. In a, uh, in a in a in a bird cage, uh, a one-legged albino crow in a bird cage. There we go. Um, uh, right. Okay. Uh, and she steps out, and we see the chaos that you've caused. We see, like like we see the fact that not only did you tell people to leave because the world is ending, you did it as a swarm of fucking rats. As uh, Linda's standing there, you would just feel a little tap on your shoulder and once again kind of hunched over and looking a little more frail than he did can't still not be persuaded to stay in thy true form oh sweet piper and she lays a gentle hand upon his face and just strokes it gently maybe one day But for now, we must get these people out of here. Cool. Uh, while this is going oh, on, can I be using my ministrations ability to absolutely. try and calm and guide these souls toward uh, the moon? That's my goal, ultimately, is to mm -hmm. get these people where we all need to go, which is away from here to yeah. the the, uh, the under moon. Uh, mm -hmm. I what do I roll for ministrations? Because I can. It says once per session. I think this is. It just it just works. Uh, okay, it says wait, wait. it says once per session, lead your allies in a service of praise to the moon beneath. How you practice your faith is up to you. All player characters who took so I guess it's all player characters. Can I, because of what we're trying to do, extend that power to influence uh, the non? -peace? Yeah. So like yeah, like um, I'm happy for you to spend this, and rather than heal people because no one's really been hurt that much aside from you, um, yeah. to like to to go out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So um, 
you I are can uh, how I do it if you want. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I'll need, I'll, I'll need you to. Yeah. Um, um I think. Let, let, let I, me describe the. Let me describe the situation, yeah. and then we'll go there. Um, you are. Um, as as Lind and her sister walk out onto the on onto the rooftop out of the church, um, everything is in ev everything is in hot chaos. Uh, people are uh, like like word is spreading, so there's more chaos on this rooftop and there's slightly less than slightly. Less. But um, people are trying to grab as much as they can. Um, so you, you can see people like uh, like some of them are throwing valuable items off the side of the building to try and sacrifice those before it's lost. Um, people are arguing about whether or not to jump off now, or to, or, or to. Uh, there is, uh, and and like you can hear uh, shouting and screaming um, from beneath as they've started to go down and they're hitting the ghosts. Now you emerge from the church resplendent, um, running towards the area, uh, carrying the uh, the garden? the shrine, the shrine. Of the moon, uh, uh, the shrine of the moon beneath on her back is Cachette. Um, he, uh, your contact who, who, who you know from here, who, 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 who you have history with. Uh, the shrine beneath is this big, the shrine of the moon beneath is this big fucking triptych, this heavy, like mahogany grade triptych lashed onto her back, which she's, which, which she's coming out with. She catches eyes with you and, uh, and like clocks that you're probably responsible for this in some way. Uh, and yes, please. Tell us, tell us how you managed to calm the folk. Um, I think in a time like this, it's best to sing a soothing song. <gasps> so I begin to sing the song of my people. Uh, because I'm a knoll, that song sounds roughly like... And as I make those un unearthly noises, more of the voices uh, that I have, of the souls that I have summoned, start to join as sort of a chorus. So sort of a call and response as though I am, uh, as though I was a female Noel calling out to my pack. Uh, just, can can, can we all, chorus. can we all try and, can we all try and make that noise? Give us a second. The other one. Is... <laughs> I really thought that would sound better. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. The 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 ghosts around you start to start to start to howl and start to um it's every single ghost picks a different note and uh they come together into this overlapping cacophony um which washes through the area like uh like like moonlight on uh on on an oasis there you go just like washes through and everyone sort of comes to their senses a little bit everyone manages to like stop throwing valuable items off the side of the building everyone stops like every, like this pe people step back from the edge and they've realized that they have to get out of here some people start looking up and seeing and seeing that writhing mass of flesh and Can that's I just... the crowd please uh i step forward i think i'm going to stride forward next to cash it and mm -hmm. As I'm a knoll, I imagine I'm physically larger than Cashit is. Yeah, stand up straight, absolutely. Yeah, I would like to then lift the shrine with Cashit in, like, hanging from it now because there's sort of light to it, uh, and set them both on my shoulders and say to the audience or say to those assembled, "Lost souls, fearful souls, wayward souls, follow me." I will show you the way. To there the is an almighty fucking explosion from the ceiling. The sound of teeth ripping apart reality as the heart itself bursts from the roof and tumbles down an enormous intestine the size of the channel fucking tunnel smashes apart the building. The, yeah. the, 
the distant one, the blood starts to rain down beneath you as the as the two of you come out of the come out of the building and walk down towards Well Street Station. You see as you walk towards the entrance, that's a hideous, cancerous, toothy. Um, uh, what 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 the tumors called? They got teeth in them. Oh, um, uh, uh, bad. H H H H. It begins with an H. Hematoma. Hematoma. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 It's writhing hematomas. You can see, Jeez. like, you, you, like the uh, the 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 front of the engine, which you were hoping to you're, you're hoping to fix, rises up and gets torn to shreds inside as the yeah. entire that there's and then everything pauses for a second and there's this absolute absolute silence and then it beats and you all die damn over folks oh my oh! gosh wow <laughs> twins, twins last words were just oh i really <laughs> wanted to see this guy again oh no <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, yeah, what's everyone's last final thought? I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! Uh, please, please, uh, give us, give us your, uh, give us an epilogue. I uh, uh, for uh, I'll, I'll, it's quite succinct. I mean, <laughs> now that I've said it's quite succinct, I want his final thought to just be shit. But <laughs> he, ah, shit! As he sees what is happening, um, Gethin removes his badge and says, "I've let you down." No, uh, uh, um, mm, mm, mm. the ghosts arrive from around you. It's like, no, 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 you served us well. You yeah. served them well, and someone else will come in your place. And uh, and like and like the ghosts go forward and wrap their cold arms around you, and you realize that you can't touch ghosts, but these ghosts are touching you, so you must too be a ghost. Yeah. Um, and and the uh, and yeah, and the the we realize it's all a reflection in your dirty gravy stained badge. Mm -hmm. love it oh that's actually quite heartwarming thank you mm. yeah in his in as he's embraced into his own death uh he feels at peace for the first time that he can remember that's nice What's um next? yeah uh, let's go with the pipe the dyed piper who, who did this thing like mate you've got a zenith so you could have popped that if you want <laughs> i mean as you can marry the queen. In fact, you should marry. marry yeah, marry. get married. Get married real quick. As the feeling <laughs> of righteous zealotry just passes through every vein, every sinew of his body, and he feels stronger than ever. The piper looks in the direction of Lind, and he sees this power, and he sees the heart falling all about. And he knows he is going to a better place. He is going to be as one. The many and the one, all connected in a cacophony of tales and this deafening silence. And just before the heart beats one final time, he sees the tales unravel. He sees the water dry up. And he sees the eyes, not of a giant, beautiful rat queen, but of something altogether more horrible. And he realizes he's been lied to, <gasps> as it crushes him, and he disappears. Lind. Ooh, excellent. Who, who, who next? I, I want, I want Warabe to end this. Because I feel I feel Warabe is kind of the shepherd of all the souls here. Mm. Um, has some, and plus it's got that moon juice. Uh, anyway, uh, Lind. The with the heart enveloping everything mm. that she is, mm. her entire world. She wasn't able to save her sister, but she was able to submit herself body and soul and what was left of her sanity completely to the heart. She has never felt more fulfilled. And as she does so, she begins to let herself 
revert back to her true form for one last time. And she feels the knot, the mass of the rat tails in her chest. She feels each individual making up every last one of her limbs, the ones scurrying around in her brain, crawling through her arteries. And she lays every last set of eyes she has on the piper, this sweet guide who for a mere, a mere channeling of magic helped her through this labyrinth to her one heart's true desire. And so she lets him see what lies at her true heart and the tales unravel. And as they do, there is no drowned queen within, no, no giant rat as he may have imagined, just blood. So much blood, the sweet life blood of this place. And that is all there ever was. Top draw, just. So I think for Warabe, um, as he, I think as he was carrying uh, Kashit and the the shrine, he also stooped down to the, the shattered body of Ventrix, removed her bone arm and affixed it to his gun uh, as yet a number, another symbol. Uh, it does uh, melee damage now. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> uh, just in time. Uh, I hooks it onto the gun as another fetish, a soul-containing fetish. And as he hears that boom from above and sees his entire world being rent asunder, he recognizes that even though he may have failed in his mission to shepherd these souls all the way to safety, the moon has granted him power. And I correct me if I'm wrong, I did, does the fact that I have cash it with me then mean that I have successfully completed my major? Uh, sure, oh, yeah. Were... Well, I mean, like, I was like, you didn't, what, what was the major? Like, like to get them out? It was lot. rescue the shrine keeper from them. high rise. Well, that's like they have died in high rise. Okay, so that, not that one. Not so, so much. here is, well, here's well, what I, mean, I will you say. You try and get them to the moon, I suppose. I reach, yeah. So, what I do is I reach towards that moon energy and I recognize that even though I have considered the moon, the, the moon beneath this entire time as a symbol of everything that I've been working towards, a symbol of that togetherness, of that unity, of the peace that can be achieved on the serenity of the crescent moon's surface. I recognize that that is a promised land that I will never reach. And that is okay, as long as I can get everyone else there. Mm -hmm. And as I recognize that, I, in my realm of souls, seeing more souls now being up added suddenly as people begin to die, I completely subsume myself into the power of the moon, mm -hmm. feel my essence spread out, and I want to form a moon-like protective covering around all of those souls, sheltering them with the power of the moonlight and hopefully shepherding them into its crescent. So that when you see the moon's crescent, there is now an orb uh, containing all of these souls oh, sitting, uh, resting inside of it. Yeah, uh, that's good. Yeah, and I allow my essence, all of who I am, to be completely consumed. And, uh, and he, uh, once and for all becomes we uh, as I finally am absorbed into everything that everything and everyone that I've been trying to help all this time. Beautiful. Wonderful. Great. Mm. Elaine, I feel like maybe you got cheated out of a proper ending. <laughs> I think the, I think the perfect ending for Quinn is like a post credits. It's like way, way in the future. Don't Someone, you, you know, forget about me. Digs yeah. up, you know, they're they're rummaging through the the mm. ruins of of what was once this version of the heart, mm. and they find um, this old sheet of metal, the perfect shape to cook something on her old breastplate, and they realize that on the inside there are hundreds of names etched. Ah. 
Oh, she only God. had to save 86, but she did it oh. a long time ago. Oh. She could have gone home at any time, but Mom. she chose to stay. Yeah, oh. and I hope that in this moment where Warabi gathers up these dying souls and shepherds them, that I hope her soul was one of those ones and she gets to be reunited with all those people that she, uh, she, she accidentally did <laughs> once upon a time. So, you know, yeah. Cool. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for playing. That was that was that was lovely play from everyone. Delightful. Uh, thank you to chat for all the money and then having the decency to stop three and a half hours in. <laughs> that, was, that was that was great. Or three hours? Yeah, it was great. Um, and thank yeah. I'm. This is this is this is a very. This has been a really lovely. It's been a really lovely experience, especially now it's ended. <laughs> and um, I I'd also like. I'd also like to thank you. Oh no! Yes, I think I could have played for a while longer as well. Like, I, I, you know, I had, I had like, I, I had places to go before you reached the moon. <laughs> I had, there, there, there was a subplot involving stealing an engine from a fairground. <laughs> well, Jesus we Christ. swerved that. Whoops. <laughs> before well, we uh, yeah. uh, head out, I do want to give everyone a chance to oh yes, do please any, plug right. any pertinence, anything um, like that. Um, uh, I will will go in semi reverse order, I guess. Nope, I don't remember the order from the beginning. So Jess, you go first. <laughs> oh, sure thing. Hello. Um, I have been and will continue to be uh, Jess Jewel. Uh, she, he, they. I don't give a fuck. Um, you can find me on Twitter uh, at Doctor Bees, and you can find me on Instagram at Jula Hoop because I I don't know how to keep things simple. Um, when I am not uh, wearing these incredible contacts and being a spooky, scary lady, um, I, I am a producer for Three Black Halflings, which the incredible Jeremy Cobb is one of, alongside Jasper William Cartwright and Liv Kennedy. Um, it is a podcast about diversity and dice rolls, DM tips, and everything in between. But I will let Jeremy, who is the let's be fair better of us uh explain a little bit more about that but you can follow them at three black halflings on twitter at three black halflings on instagram we have a tiktok go check out our website and um also we have a live show coming up in exactly one week uh exactly a week on the 5th of april so if you are in london near or around the leicester square theater come and drop by and say hello um but yeah that is pretty much everything about me um i have had the best time um and the i've been retching silently in my mouth for a, a, a vast amount of it the crow thing in particular oh, really yeah, oh, tough draw. that took that took mm. some keeping down um mm. but i play this again in a heartbeat hey, that was awful um but yeah if you haven't already <laughs> get, get a copy of heart Get, um, you know, they can't do you, that now. You've invited us you've, on here you've to play a really cool game. To plug this game. Well, I get, well, get, well, okay, well, go fuck yourself, thank you. Right now. Who the fuck are you? Um, let's plug someone else who apparently deserves it then. Fuck this guy. Uh, <laughs> All we've been doing for the last three and a half hours is plugging this game. <laughs> And it's been great. Let's plug no, it more. Been, it's been good. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. give it, give it. You lost your fucking money. <laughs> <laughs> my wallet full of dirty tenors. <laughs> um, who's next in the order? Well, thank you so much for uh, joining us, Jess. And I think a proper segue, you've given a very good segue in for Jeremy. So let's hear from you, please. Hello, uh, I've been Jeremy Cobb, pronouns he, him. Uh, as Jess said, I'm a member of the show Three Black Halflings. Uh, we're a TTRPG uh, and general nerd podcast, sort of a variety show. We do interviews, we do commentary, we do actual play, uh, for which I'm the resident GM of the show, uh, mainly dealing with diversity and inclusivity in TTRPGs and nerd stuff in general. Uh, we got all sorts of guests uh we've got all sorts of we talk about all sorts of different topics um there's a good chance if they are a well-known ttrpg person there's a very good chance they may have already been on our show um it's yeah it's a lot of fun we we always bring sort of a uh, a more warm and humorous uh tone to a lot of these potentially very difficult uh and stressful discussions um 
And you can find me on uh, Twitter at Jeremy Cobb one. That's Cobb with two B's, the number one. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at the Cobbmeister. You can find three black halflings uh, at three. That's the number three black halflings pretty much everywhere. Um, and in fact, on our OnlyFans, we do actually piss for money. Uh, so, you know, head over yeah. there. Um, and if you enjoy what you're hearing, you can also support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash TV halflings, where, uh, among other things, I've been post we post all sorts of different stuff like bonus episodes i've been doing i've been recounting the spider-man clone saga from the 90s recently uh which was a mistake it's bad it's really it's bad so fucking bad beautiful oh trash yeah it's so bad <laughs> um i've also been talking about animorphs i actually just recorded uh last week i recorded a 90 minute recording of me talking about uh the artistic achievements of the beach boys uh, so that's going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, if you haven't listened to the Beach Boys, like actually critically, seriously, they're a really good band. They're a really, really good band. Uh, but let's join the Patreon and you'll hear me talk about it in depth. Um, but yeah, the, uh, we've also got the live show next week. So if you're in the UK, come check us out. Um, where where can people find tickets, Jess? Could, would you they be able to find them? tickets on the Leicester Square website, uh, which you can find if you just Google like Leicester Square theater that, that, that it'll be the first thing that comes up there um but if you want to uh there are links in our link tree on our instagram and then also on the twitter uh pretty much if you go to any of the 3bh socials one of us has posted about it recently and you can find tickets there so it's true it's true. Uh, and I also want to shout out uh, Jess, who is our incredible producer, uh, truly invaluable. The show might not even exist at this point if Jess had not uh, come and been so incredibly helpful and instrumental in uh, helping us out. Uh, and also, I want to say thank you to everybody here who I got to play with. I met most of you for the first time today, and you're all incredible. This was a blast. Yeah, I think uh, we did very well. This, oh, thank you. This was a great game. Uh, I want to play it again. Uh, I want to I want to bring back my boy uh, Rob down the line, uh, but this is this is awesome. I'm uh, back from the great. mood. It sucks that out. <laughs> <laughs> Made of cheese. Look, Always was. Out. <laughs> it turns out there was already a man in the moon, so I was allowed <laughs> to stay. Uh, but uh, yeah, they, uh, uh, this has been great. Thank you, thank you so much, and thank you so much to everybody uh, who who helped fund to keep us going. Yeah. This has been fantastic. All right, I'm going to throw it back to you, CJ. Wonderful. I, I, I'm going to interrupt briefly. CJ, have you posted uh, says drawings in the chat? Uh, no, I will oh, do yeah. that. They are. Yes, oh so my cool. god, have you seen them? Yes, so, yeah, so, so um, have you yeah, seen yeah, me? Yeah, explain. Okay, I've yes. Never... Uh, Sarah oh. has uh, sketched all of our characters while watching the uh, the stream. Uh, thank you. If you're still here, Sarah, thank you so much. They're gorgeous. I've uh, retweeted it on uh, Rowan Rick and Deckard's Twitter, but I'm also going to just drop it in the chat now so you can all enjoy it as well. As a forever GM who never gets character art about them, this means so much. <laughs> Thank you. So <laughs> trick is, trick is, you just you got to work a little bit hard until you can commission a book full. <laughs> I was ever drawing my characters on. <laughs> oh In the God. chat, very cool. Also retweeted. Thank you, Sarah. That is cool as hell. Um, and I think the next appropriate next person to ask would be Edward Spence. Please give us your Ooh. pertinence. Yes, I am Edward Spence, he, him. Uh, I'm not a part of Three Black Halflings, but I'm going to plug them anyway. You should go and listen to them. They are incredible. Um, but you can find me at Edward underscore Spence underscore on most social media platforms. Uh, you can find me as a GM over on the Wounded Warrior Project on Tuesdays. Uh, we are barreling towards the finale, our very explosive finale of our third season of Eden Falls, which is a Tales from the Loop campaign. And um, you might even see Jasper William Cartwright on the channel before before April is out. Who knows? We have some very exciting announcements lined up. Um, but you can also check out uh, our 10 episode mini series of Beyond the Brook, produced by Draconiques and over on Cell Luna's YouTube channel. Um, in fact, while we were playing, uh, Rascal have uh, published a review of it uh, by the wonderful Rowan Zioli. Uh, so go check that out. And you can also see me uh, in around two weeks' time over on RP Geeks, where I'll be running a four episode miniseries of Orbital Blues with an incredible cast 
please go check it out. It's going to be great. That is everything from me. I can only say thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, go buy Heart. It's too late for you to back this, but you should go and buy the original <laughs> source book anyway. What uh, an it's... level of hustle on all three of you. It's delightful. I know. It's tremendous. Yeah. We're picking up the slack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you got to get it. You just got to get it like memorized after a while. You're just like, hi, yeah, I'm this, I, I'm I, here, I, I'm I, there. I, 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 <laughs> this is what I do. <laughs> I, at no, one point, I was like, um, check my calendar on my Twitter. I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure to play with all of you. And for all of you who've donated in the audience and allowed us to play for such a long time, thank mm. you as well. It's been nice to have a three-act structure rather than a short film. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was that was one and a half acts tops. But I'm glad I'm glad you enjoyed it. We got there. Well, uh, next up, Elaine. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this as well. I mean, I know you work with us, but you didn't have to be here, and we appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes. I'm Emily Lithko. She, her. Um, you can find me on various socials uh, at Elaine Lithko, um, or at Digital Dryad. I think I might be on Blue Sky. Um and uh, yes, I don't I don't hop on streams very much nowadays, so I have been very outclassed by everybody in this room. Hey. But I greatly appreciate yeah. breakfast. You got to go in. I, uh, uh. I made breakfast. I walked down a corridor and then died. I... <laughs> you did it. I, I, like no, I will say alone. But I describe it like that. I think it does reflect no. badly on both of us. <laughs> You were our mother from start yeah. to finish, and I felt it in my core yeah. when you died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't ever disparage yourself <laughs> like that. You were incredible from start yeah. to finish. Drop, you were so in character. That's we were trying to show. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. You killed we, it. Um, we love. Mm, I was going to say, we love mommy. <laughs> oh um, my God, uh, CJ. Uh, didn't mean to. It's, anyway. it's just habit. I'm sorry. I'm just off wow. all of the Wow, time. CJ. Oh, no. Way to bring the tone down. If you, excuse yeah. me, I'm going to piss myself again. <laughs> uh, Elaine, yeah, so... please take this back from me, for God's sake. Thank you, everybody, for having us on. Thank you, everybody, for watching the stream. Um, thank you for everyone who backed and uh, praised the, the timer uh, appropriately. I know some of you cheated. We, we'll find where you are. I will find um, you. But, you we'll around your fucking ass, uh, boy. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, thank you so much, everybody, for came along. Um, obviously, Dagger in the Heart of the Campaign is now concluded. Um, but uh, very, you know, very shortly, we'll have... Uh, Pledge Management's kicking around, and before long, hopefully, these beautiful books uh, will be landing in shelves, etc. And anybody who missed out will be able to get their grisly hands on uh, the new books and everything. So, yeah, that's about as good a plug I can do after like four hours of streaming. So yeah. that's what you're. Yeah. That's we what are, you're getting. We are pros alone. These these guys. These guys. That's, they're just getting warmed up. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, we're off to actually play another game of heart after this that yeah yeah like, 24 yeah, hours so, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah this is just a warm-up you know oh, 24 <laughs> this whole workout is my warm-up <laughs> yeah you know light body horror for the warm-up mm, mm, mm. <laughs> i also think it's very appropriate that we never did reveal the final stretch goal that sat at the center of the heart because nobody should uh, be able to look upon the heart and live as is just expressed by the end of this campaign. I so was really, really hoping that would be, I was so hoping that would be revealed. I, never, I, I genuinely I, got it. Genuinely mm, got it. Oh. What, what number was that? Uh, we hit uh, 174,000. What was the stretch goal at? One, oh, we did, did we not? Did we not have, oh. So we had Glistening Core at 180, and then there was yeah. the uh, final. From what, from what I can remember, it was a lot of work. So I'm kind of, yeah, I'm glad we didn't hit it. <laughs> yeah. We'll, we'll do it one day. Yeah. I'm sure. We just well, like to add lots of publishy bits and go to printers and go, hey, is this possible? Um, as mm -hmm. you can see from the gorgeous work done on Eat the Reich. Um, I will take this moment to uh, say my pertinence. I think if, uh, Elaine, did you have anything else to add? 
No, I'm good. Cool, great. Um, hi guys, um, I'm CJ They Them. Uh, you can find me pretty much everywhere under the handle CJ Starry, except for I think Instagram, which is CJ Starry, because somebody who doesn't even use it took the username. Anyway, uh, it has been my pleasure to help host this stream with all of these wonderful, wonderful, talented, hilarious, and horrifying people. Uh, really, really great experience, and I hope to have you all uh, work with us again at some time. Uh, and uh, a couple of things uh, obviously Eat the Reich is getting out to backers at the moment uh, it will be staggered please, of course please remain calm America Yes. Uh, <laughs> please stay calm it's still, it's still in a big shipping container we're sorry you live too far away from Latvia Yep. so you, you, will, you will still be getting your shipments they are coming uh, and we're so excited for you to get them because they are gorgeous. Thank you to our printers, Livonia, who do a great job there. Um, thank you again, I've said it twice already, I'll say it again, to Sarah Cousins and to Gareth Ryder Hanrahan for all of the Dagger in the Heart um, content that would not, we would not be here without them and without their creations and their beautiful artwork and beautiful words. And I want to remind everyone that Hollows is coming up soon. Uh, so we are going to be going to launch uh, within a little bit after we get a little bit of a break after this, but you can get the quick start now. Um, it's, We're making a video. For we our, are also making a video, which is why Grant is threatening you with an axe. Shooting a live uh, action video. Yep, there's, oh there's, there's a trailer coming. Uh, there's beautiful, beautiful art and some, by Sam Lamont and some animation that, as I understand, is a sort of um, co-work between Sam Lamont and uh, Sam's partner. Um, and yeah, it's, I don't know, it's going to be awesome. We're really, really excited. We do things pretty much weekly on our channel for Hollows right now. We did Hollows Fight Club for a while. Then we did some entity creation and coming up, um, not immediately, but... Shortly, we are going to be running a hollow, uh, which is m m more fluff than just the Hollows Fight Club. We're going to have a little more of the story, a little more of the information, which I think this might be the first time we've uh, readily admitted that that's the next thing we're doing. But it sure is. Yay! This, you, hear, you heard it here first. Uh, we did also reach the goal for a uh, Dagger and Heart actual play, so look forward to that. Oh, yeah. Um, nice. Well, heart actual play, right? Not Dagger in the Heart. Heart. Or is it Dagger? Yes, yes. it's Heart. Yeah. Heart actual yeah. play. My bad. Yeah. Heart actual right, play. Right, because cast these specific characters. Sorry? Is that, is that part of it? We're bringing back this specific cast with these yeah. characters? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's us. <laughs> no, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I will Freedom. say... If you, oh, bring you back in your ultra compressed meat paste form. Oh, yes. Yeah. Two D style. Cam cameos <laughs> as us, but just meat paste. Um, I, I will say, if you've had your eye on Twitter, Kieran has already been tweeting a little bit about it. Uh, well, about how horrible it would be if we met that goal, which was definitely sarcasm. So, keep yeah. an eye out for the announcement of that cast and the announcement. We have. Of... We've done it. It's, it's already been announced, Sidra. You know. We, we put in an update. Okay. Yeah, we put an update on Dagger. I take that back. I've been on holiday. Um, <laughs> keep, keep an eye out for the announcement that's already happened. And, Again. Uh, well, fuck. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great cast. You'll love it. It's yeah. Uh, ev everything's yep. Yeah, everything's. I think I. I think I don't think I have anything else left to uh, plug I or say. I think I've plugged literally everything we're doing right now but keep an eye on our socials um if not and uh find us at rowan rook uh deckard here and uh rowan rook and nope just rowan rook deckard on twitter i believe you know or just google rowan rook and deckard i guess uh thank you so much for joining us um i had quite a quite a lot of things to tell you about there and they were very exciting and they were mostly correct information. So I'm going to hand this <laughs> off to Grant to sign us out. Thank you all so much for your support and uh, <laughs> for being funny and engaging um, and harassing us in the chat. Beautiful people, thank you so much for coming on and throwing money at, money at us. We have thanked you enough times. We all want to go and have dinner. You all want to go and have dinner. I did say you should go and have dinner with your mum, and she like it will be cold now if she did lamb. So uh, go be with your families or not with your families. We love you very much. We've had a wonderful time. Let's kill this stream to death. Bye, everyone.